You're looking at the stadium Buckeye fans, so finally referred to as the Horseshoe. And this afternoon, their number one ranked Buckeyes of Ohio State roll out the welcome mat for the Rockets of Toledo. The big cat, Andy Katsumar, winning the Buckus as a sophomore last year. This season, he'd like to take it one step further and bring home the national championship back to Columbus, Ohio. Hi, everybody. Along with Dom Tiberi, I'm Mike Gleason. Former Buckeye linebacker Ryan Miller is down on the sidelines. We'll hear from him shortly. And, Dom, a week ago, the Buckeyes passed their first test of the 98 campaign, going into Morgantown, beating West Virginia. And uh, Joe Germain, after sharing the duties with Stan Jackson the last two seasons, certainly looked control, under control now that he's in the lead. Well, Mike, Joe Germain is number seven, and I'll tell you what, Buckeye fans love this guy. He's a cool, calm competitor, and make no bones about it, this guy is the leader of this Buckeye offense. Now, when Joe's not throwing the ball, he'll be handing off the number five, Michael Wiley. Now, the knock against Wiley last year may be a little bit too much with the happy feet, but that wasn't the case last week down in Morgantown as the Buckeyes took on West Virginia. He hit the holes hard and put up some big numbers. Some very impressive numbers, and the numbers you're looking at signify first starts as a Buckeye. As you can see, Wiley heads and shoulders over a very elite group, 17 carries for 140 yards, 8.2 yards every time he touched the football. On the other side of the football, we may have the story of the afternoon, a quarterback by the name of Chris Wallace. He grew up about an hour in Springfield, and boy, he put up some... Very, very big numbers last year, throwing for 27 touchdowns. You can't help but like Chris Wallace. He's overcome so much. And I'll tell you what, he had a whale of a game last week against Temple, responsible for three touchdowns. He ran for two, threw another. This is the guy that makes this racket offense go. And we'll be hearing a lot of number seven as well as number 11 for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Antoine Winfield, some feel the best defensive back ever to play. It's the Buckeyes and the Rockets from the Horseshoe. And we'll be back with more after this. Back at the Horseshoe, John Cooper and his Buckeyes close to 95 and 96. And right now they're trying to hold on to that number one ranking in college football. And his former linebacker, Ryan Miller, was down on the field earlier. Had a chance to talk with the head of the coach of the Buckeyes, John Cooper. All right, Coach, first of all, number one team in the nation. has got to feel good after a big victory at West Virginia to come home and play in front of your home crowd. A absolutely no question about it, Ryan. It's always great to play before the home folks here. And, you know, I've been in a lot of stadiums around the country, but there's no better setting for a college football game than right here in the Horseshoe. So it's great to get back home. Now, what would you do all week long to prepare for maybe not having a letdown here with all the media attention focused on the uh, West Virginia Mountaineers last week? A little different this week uh, for the Toledo Rockets. What did you do differently to prepare so you don't have a letdown here this afternoon? I'll tell you exactly what we did. We had very, very hard practice sessions. I think the best way you get ready for a football team like Toledo is have good, you know, good work during the week. If you ask me what's the best thing about our program, I'm, I'm going to tell you it's chemistry and the work ethic of our players. So they will not be a letdown this afternoon. I can guarantee you that. Our players will play hard. Well, thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck today. Okay, Ryan Miller, the former Buckeye linebacker. We're ready to go. Dan Stoltz uh, teeing it up at the 35-yard line. The Buckeyes won the toss, and they deferred to the second half, so the Rockets will get the football first here this afternoon. Back is Curry and Harris. Harris out of Columbus South High School. And Stoltz kick goes out of bounds at about the three-yard line. And that's where the Rockets will have some decent field position to open up this game. Remember, uh, West Virginia opened up last week. Some of the guys to look for was Sean Tate, All-American in 1995, coming back from the knee surgery. And the receivers, Ray Curry, the same high school teammate from Tate out of Detroit. And then the senior statesman on that offensive line for the Rockets, like Ohio State, they're young. Westrich, the only senior on the front. So the Rockets going without the huddle to open up this football game. The Rockets with a crack at number one. First time since 1987 they played the number one team in college football. Wallace goes upstairs right away looking for Kreitzberg, overshoots him at the 40-yard line. And Ahmed Plummer covering for the Buckeyes on the play. Now let's run down the starting lineup. First of all, Rodney Bailey, the only returning starter. He started late for the Buckeyes last year. That's how young the Buckeyes are up front. And, of course, the linebackers. Everybody in the country knows about these guys. Andy Katzenmeyer, Diggs and Rodzinski, and the secondary. Most people think this is the best secondary in all of college football. David Moore, the senior statesman there. Of course, Antoine Winfield, the All-American. Three of those four guys, candidates for the Thorpe Award in 1998. Second down now, and 10, the ball resting at the 35-yard line. This time, they keep it on the ground. And the give is to the fullback. 
And he picks up possibly one, gets back to the line of scrimmage. Actually, that was Harris with the call. So that time they went with Harris and Wa was Sean Tate in the backfield at the same time. David Moore coming up to make the initial contact for Ohio State. So now the Rockets facing a third down. The ball resting at the 36, third and nine. Twin receivers at the top of your screen. Single setback for the Rockets. Finished nine and three a year ago. They come in after a victory with Temple. Wallace. Flush from the pocket, nowhere to go. He's pushed out of bounds, and he's pushed out of bounds hard. Diggs. Making the initial contact for Ohio State, but Grant Johnson had a good game against West Virginia. I'll start to push number seven out of bounds. That's just great coverage downfield. He looked and looked and looked, couldn't find anyone, felt the pressure, and boom, right as he gets to the line, of, right as he gets to the uh, out of bounds line, he is nailed there by number 32, Niall Diggs. Wow. That is an attention getter. Niall Diggs out of Los Angeles. Boy, you're going to hear a lot of this guy in the next couple of years for the Buckeyes. Led the team in sacks last year. Only started two ball games for Ohio State at defensive end. Lindstrom back to punt at the 25. Good kick. Sending Boston back. It hits at the four-yard line. And it gets a Toledo bounce. Boston picks it up at the two. And he is going down at the two-yard line. Good coverage by the Rockets that time, making the initial stop. Number 85, Greg Grothaus. Well, Wallace uh, felt that Buckeye defense that time. His former teammate, Dee Miller, had a chance to talk with Dom Tiberi earlier today about that fact. I so the Buckeyes open up their first possession of the afternoon deep in their territory the ball resting at the two the give is to Wiley weaves his way through traffic but not before the yellow laundry litters the field So not a good start. The Buckeyes only flagged five times in West Virginia. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense, half the distance to the goal line. Don remains first. Let's run down the starters here for the Buckeyes on the offensive side of the football here today. Michael Wiley, that start, 140 yards. He had 121 yards against Wyoming, but he did not start that game a year ago. You heard about David Boston, but you put D. Miller in that mix, and definitely the best tandem in the country. And then you look at Rob Murphy, he's the All-American. And Brooks Burris, actually the only senior on the offensive line. The give up the middle, gain of one at best. Now the Rockets defensively, the guys trying to stop the number one team in college football. But Toro had a couple of sacks last week against Temple. He anchors that defensive front. Matt Valent. 122 tackles a year ago, nine against the Owls seven days ago. And in the secondary, Kelly Herndon. He's the guy that uh, the coaching staff at Toledo really expect big things out of for Herndon here in 1998. Second down for the Buckeyes. Jermaine wants to go upstairs. He has Boston at the eight-yard line. He's across the 10 and dropped close to the 15-yard line. On the play, Jameel Turner for the Rockets. Nothing real fancy there. Joe Germain with great pass protection. Just dropped back, looked upfield. David Boston will turn it out, and Jermaine delivers it on the money. If you're able to do that, you're going to move the chains all day long. Well, talking uh, with the head coach, Gary Pinkle, yesterday, he says, hey, the defensive front has to put some pressure on Jermaine because the DBs for the Rockets, so you got D. Miller on one side coming at you, number nine, David Boston. I mean, five times on third down situations, they converted. And this time, the ball is dropped at the 20-yard line. And that is a rarity for number 15, D. Miller, to drop any football. He may have heard some footsteps there. Got to look the football in, but the ball was delivered. And he just simply dropped it. You won't see that very often. You're absolutely right. You'll see some different things out of Ohio State's offense using Joe Germain. As a matter of fact, they used the shotgun a little bit to try to buy him a little more protection rolled him out as we just saw on that play they will try because this offensive line has been suspect to allowing Jermaine to get hit on Thursday they even were trying the flea flicker pass give to Wiley hits the left side some running room across the 20 finally goes down at the 23 yard line 
hit by a host of rocket tacklers. Derek Beckwith, the outside linebacker, making the initial contact. One of the goals of this season was to do a better job running the football. It's hard to believe, but last year Ohio State checked in seventh in the Big Ten as far as rushing the football, and they believe number five, Michael Wiley's the guy that can carry the load. Good blocking up front. Uses his blocker and is able to pick up about nine yards on the play. High formation. Wiley behind Keller. Mitch goes to Wiley. Cuts it back across the 25 to 30. He's got some running room. Midfield, 45, 30, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Michael Wiley, 76 yards. That's what, they, that's what they mean by he can break it at any time. That's what they like about Michael Wiley. He's a guy that can hit the home run at any given time. And I'll tell you what, number 15, D. Miller, wasn't exactly the greatest block in the world, but he allowed Wiley to go into the end zone. There you see Michael heading up the sideline. Number 15, D. Miller, and he will enable Wiley to get into the end zone. Good job on the part. John Cooper talked earlier this season about his receivers. Yeah, we know they can catch the ball, but they got to do a good job blocking down the field. Michael Wiley can thank D. Miller for that touchdown. Stoltz on the kick, the soft one of Oroville, or Bolivity Hole. Splits the uprights, and the Buckeyes score quickly. They're up on the Rockets, 7-7. We're back with more after this. Back in the horseshoe in Columbus, Ohio, Mike Leeson along with Dom Tiberi and the Buckeyes, the number one team in the land, strike early. The Rockets uh, said they have to hang tough in the first quarter if they want to hang in this ball game. Well, the Buckeyes go 98 yards in five plays, capped by a 76-yard run by Michael Wiley. Well, Toledo's got to keep their head in this ballgame. Obviously, they're in a hostile situation. There's 90,000-plus fans here. They've got to be pumped. They've got to be excited. But this is a very good football team. Toledo has to keep its composure. They've got to go out there and say, hey, we deserve to be in this ballgame and not get uh, shaken up. Well, the Buckeyes have been on a roll. Remember back in 1978, they lost 19 to nothing to Penn State. Buckeye fans remember that day as the debut of a freshman quarterback with the name of Mr. Arch Leister. That's right. This time the kick goes into the end zone. It's Harris out of South High School in Columbus, but he downs it. And they'll start at the 20-yard line. And right now, let's go downstairs to that former Buckeye linebacker, Ryan Miller. Thanks a lot, Mike. I tell you what. Both these guys, Chris Wallace and D. Miller, you see on this shirt here, went to Springfield South, played together, broke a lot of Ohio high school football records together. A little nerved up going against each other this afternoon. Chris Wallace, first play from scrimmage, lines up over the guard. D. Miller drops his first ball. I think they're going to shake it off, though, these next couple of series. Mike? Okay, thanks a lot. Ryan Miller roamed these sidelines from sideline to sideline for three years as a starter. As Chris Wallace now trying to get things going. Wallace broke 10 records at Toledo in 1997. Comes out shooting for the fullback, overshoots, and Gary Berry on the coverage for the Buckeyes. Take a look at this. Watch the kicker get absolutely nailed. Wow. <laughs> Actually, that was uh, uh, Steve Bellasari, Steve number eight. Freshman. Yeah. Belisari, the younger brother of Greg Belisari, yeah. now with Tampa Bay, reminded me of when Dick Butkus used to chase Chester Markle around with the Packers. He tried to take three guys on. Single set. The give is to Tate. Tate's across the 25, up to about the 28-yard line before he's dropped. Well, Sean Tate, what a story he is, too. Back when Eddie George had that huge season. In 1995, Tate was the first All-American ever named at Toledo. Boy, it's some monster numbers. Boy, this kid, I'll tell you what, it's just good to see him out on the football field. Missed the last two seasons, had a devastating knee injury. Many people surprised this kid is even playing football. He's a wonderful story for Buckeye fans. This story, much like Joe uh, Montgomery, the talented running back for Ohio State with Sean Tate. Just happy to see this kid playing football. Comes back with 3,528 yards. Second only to Ricky Williams of Texas among active players. Some jump. Jumping on the offensive line. Now, the Buckeyes are saying it was the offense. Obviously, the Rockets set some movement with Ohio State, and they jumped over the neutral zone. Well, we saw Ohio State get into the neutral zone, but I think the fact that they went and may have pulled Toledo offsides. I think this is going to go against Toledo. 
Well, Tate's coming off the field right now. The Rockets are facing a third down and seven. The ball at the 23. Actually, no call on that one. So they'll bring on the punt team instead. So Gabe Lindstrom, uh, who got off a beautiful punt the first time for Gary Pinkle and sent David Boston back inside the five-yard line. This time, Boston get the 40 of Ohio State. Lindstrom, former walk-on quarterback out of Arizona back in 94, averaged 40 and a half yards a kick back in 1997. This one's not so good off the side of his foot. It's at the 46, and Boston fumbled the football, and he jumped on it, but finally, I believe it's Antoine Winfield to recover for Ohio State. That could have been the break that the Rockets needed, but the Buckeyes will have possession and a 7-0 lead at the 45-yard line. 10 minutes and 25 seconds to go in the first quarter from the horseshoe. It's the Buckeyes 7-0 over Toledo. 10.25 to go in the first quarter. There's the numbers. Ohio State scoring on a 76-yard run by Michael Wiley. Gary Pinkle, the all-time winningest coach right now in Toledo history. In his ninth season with the Rockets, 51-26-3. The MAC coach of the year, two of the last three years. And after that 1995 season, the Ohio coach of the year, former Washington Husky assistant, member of the Kent State Hall of Fame, the former tight end. And right now he's watching his Rockets trying to stop the number one team in college football. Boston at the 40. And Boston finally drops at the 32-yard line. So Joe Germain is coming out gunning. Joe put a zip on that ball and fired it right in there to number nine, David Boston. We've talked in the past. David Boston, I don't know if there's anybody in the country that can cover this kid. He is very, very tough. There you see some of the numbers that these guys did last season. David Boston, D. Miller, many consider this the best receiving tandem in the country. Penalty flag, some movement again. Looks like somebody jumped on the offensive side. Boy, just last uh, week alone, Boston and Miller teamed up. Some impressive numbers. Prior to the snap, ball starts. Offense, five-yard penalty. Don remains first. Well, the Buckeyes penalized five times last week, and right now, John Cooper won't be happy with that one even though they're in rocket territory. And uh, not only Buckeye fans showing up here today, they got a few squirrels in the stands. Man, he's mounted on be, that post. He's got a great seat. He must be giving away the lucky Buckeyes today. And the Buckeyes, total domination here early. And, of course, uh, the early part of the game, as we talked with Gary Pinkle yesterday afternoon, he says that's obviously the key. Jermaine wants to go upstairs again, finds his man, Miller at the 10. And D. Miller's in the touch for the touchdown. D. Miller was wide open. You can't get any more open than that. There was some kind of breakdown there as far as Toledo's defense. Take this from the wide angle. Look, there's D. He goes out to the right. And he is just simply wide open. He runs. He's so open, the camera can't even stay with him. The camera can't believe he's that open. Wow. Starting his 16th consecutive game, five touchdowns a year ago. That's number two in 1998. That one covers 38 yards. And the Buckeyes are flexing their muscles early here with 9.39 to go. Stoltz. The kick. And he has his second PAT of the afternoon. So 9.39 to go in the first 15 minutes of this ball game. The Buckeyes have opened up a two-touchdown lead. You're watching Big Ten football from the ESPN+. Plus. Back in the horseshoe, the Buckeyes up by a couple of touchdowns. Still in the first quarter, 9.39 to go. Talked about the squirrel inside. The squirrels are even outside. And look at it. Hopefully that's not John Cooper's lucky Buckeye. Well, actually, that's the same squirrel we saw with the band up on that pedestal. You know, squirrels tailgate, too. And this squirrel was tailgating on some Buckeyes. But, you know, the last thing uh, I remember, Buckeyes, I thought, were poisonous. So that squirrel didn't look real. He looks stuffed, if you ask me. <laughs> I hope that squirrel's all right. Well, maybe he won't be around to watch the rest of the ball game. But he's watched the Buckeyes take a two-touchdown lead. Ray Curry at the goal line, and he has stumped. Wow. Kevin Griffin. One of the top uh, special team players over the last few years for the Buckeyes. Drops him at the 11-yard line. You know what you see on these special teams play? You got a lot of guys 
that want to make it. They want to get in the starting lineup, and you'll see this for both teams, both for Toledo and Ohio State. Guys that throw caution to the wind, and they go running down the field. They try to hit somebody. They look for a collision. We saw earlier number eight, Steve Belisari. He tried to take on three guys. Well, that time, Kevin Griffin able to make the big tackle. And Chris Wallace is struggling early. He said, bring the Buckeyes on. We'll see what happens on Saturday. Single setback. But the give went to Dwayne Harris, and he slipped as soon as he picked up the football. And the Rockets will take a loss on the play. Just slipped. This turf, uh, that, that really shouldn't happen. He just lost his feet for whatever reason. You know, Gary Penkel and Toledo, they cannot panic. They know they're a very good football team. Heck, they're picked to win the Mac. Gary Pinkle, a heck of a coach. This Toledo football team, you look at this offensive line. Heck, Mike, this offensive line is bigger than Ohio State's offensive line. There's some players down there. That is an interesting point. Wallace leaves the pocket, goes downfield, and it's picked off. Damon Moore. And it's Ohio State football inside the 20-yard line. Any questions about Ohio State maybe taking Toledo lightly have been answered here early on. Ohio State came out definitely with their game faces on. Damon Moore, a guy that missed quite a bit of practice this fall because of some academic problems, but he uh, looks to be up to speed, playing very well, and uh, he just made a play on the football, able to haul it in. Big interception, momentum definitely, definitely on the side of the Buckeyes. Rodney Bailey putting the pressure on Wallace. There you see big Rodney Bailey, number 94. So the ball resting on the 18-yard line. The Buckeyes in the red zone against West Virginia. Perfect five for five. Three touchdowns and a couple of field goals. Wiley with the lane. Wiley at the 10, goes down at about the nine-yard line. Tripped up by Jameel Turner, the cornerback. Michael Wiley running right at you, number five. He'll split the defenders, runs right through them. No dancing on the part of number five. He hits the holes hard. Little stiff arm. Buckeye coach is very excited about the potential of Michael Wiley. Well, the Buckeyes some quick hitters here in 1998. 55 yards, 98 yards. Average of uh, a little over two minutes. High formation, Keller, Wiley. Jermaine wants to put it up. He's got D. Miller. And Miller's dropped to the five-yard line. Andy Boyd, the backup free safety coming up. The redshirt freshman out of Toledo makes the stop. And the Buckeyes are knocking on the door again. Buckeyes with a very controlled passing attack. Joe Germain, you know, he told me nothing really rattles him. He never gets too high, never gets too low. Plays within himself. And you talk about toughness. A lot of people don't know this, but Joe Germain's daddy used to ride bulls. You know, like in a rodeo, those type bulls. So he gets as tough and naturally. And uh, Jermaine has taken some shots, but always gets up. The numbers of the red zone last week, as we said, all five, perfect five for five. Wiley, not too much running room that time. It's the line of scrimmage. Drop at the five. And the Buckeyes trying to punch in their third touchdown. Matt Valent uh, making the initial stop for the Rockets. John Cooper. It's averaged 10 victories the last three years. You know, only Bobby Bowden, Steve Spurrier, and Phil Fulmer from Tennessee can say that. It's a pretty impressive group right there. Jermaine, upstairs, fade pattern, Boston touchdown, Ohio State. That's just pure athleticism on the part of David Boston. He wanted to football and went up and got it. David Boston, if you talk to him, he will tell you when the football is in his air, in the air, he's going to get it. He feels like it's his. And just look at that pure athleticism. 23rd career touchdown for Boston. Simply went up and over the defensive back. A lot of people saying that this year the Buckeyes could break all the passing records in the record book. With Joe Germain and the two guys he gets to play catch with, it's a very big possibility. Well, Boston came in only 55 catches shy of Chris Carter's all-time reception record at Ohio State. And there you see the numbers, seven minutes and six seconds to go. We're still in the first quarter. And the Buckeyes up by three touchdowns, 21 to nothing. David Boston, 21 consecutive starts uh, for Ohio State. 
So John Cooper's won more football games uh, in the 90s. And over the last uh, three years in the conference, John Cooper uh, certainly uh, getting it done. We'll take a look at the numbers. 95, of course, except for Michigan. The Buckeyes ran the table in 96, except for Michigan. The Buckeyes ran the table. And there you have it, John Cooper. His numbers over Lloyd Carr. Carr had a couple of eight and four seasons before winning the national title last year. We asked Gary Pinkle yesterday, Dom, if they thought Michigan would have beat Florida State. And he said, I don't want to get uh, caught up in that conversation. He's good friends with Lloyd Carr, but I get the feelings he doesn't think Michigan would have beat Florida State last year. You can talk about John Cooper, and he's the first one to admit, as Coach Hayes used to say, you win with people. Not only an outstanding recruiter, but he's got uh, one of the finest assistant coaching staffs you'll find anywhere. At the three-yard line, it's Harris. Harris across the 20, dropped at the 23 by a host of scarlet and gray jerseys. Penalty flags on the field once again. Uh, it looks like a hold. Hold on the Rockets. So things continue to snowball. Let's go back downstairs with our good friend Ryan Miller. Well, thanks, Mike. I'm sitting here handling this ESPN magazine, and there's a lot of great insight and a lot of good features in this magazine. And one of them this week, with Mark McGuire on the cover, is Alonzo Spellman, the former Buckeye outside linebacker, converted to lineman as he came to Ohio State. Talks a little bit about his trials and tribulations away from the field and about his manic depression that he's suffering from and what they're trying to do to deal with it now and hopefully make him a better player right now for the Chicago Bears. Mike? Okay, thanks a lot, Ryan. That is a very, very insightful article on ESPN Magazine. Sad story, too. A lot of people nationwide talking about uh, Alonzo. Seems like yesterday, yeah. Alonzo was running down quarterbacks here for the Buckeyes. With Sean Tate, and he is met in the hole. Jerry Rosinski, or is that the big cat, Andy Katzenmar? The big cat making the hit for the Buckeyes. Andy Katzenmar, one of the hardest hitters in the game. Many believe he is the best player in college football. And he will step up in the hole. And when he hits you, he hits you. <laughs> you can feel it, huh? That'll leave a mark. Let's ask Corby Jones. Yes. Missouri. That will leave a mark. Missouri Tigers coming into the horseshoe next week. Second down. Seven, the ball on the 12-yard line. High formation for the Rockets. First quarter. Rockets trail by three touchdowns. But keeping it on the ground. Tate again. This time he cuts back. Has some running room across the 20. David Moore will bring him down, but not until he reaches the 34-yard line. There you go. Toledo moving the football. The Rockets have to keep their composure. Coach Gary Pinko, I guarantee you, he's telling his football team, hey, guys, we are better than we're playing. We can block. They put their pants on the same way. Go out there and execute. What a block there to free him up. And Toledo moving the football, moving the chain. Well, Sean Tate's for Gary Pinkle. Rushed for 100 yards in every game in 1995. Eddie George didn't even do that. Picking up 99 against Boston College in the opener. Tate again, this time hits the left side. But he's met immediately by Dakes. Coming up from his uh, Buckeye linebacker spot. 5.37 to go, 21-0. First quarter, Buckeyes on top of Toledo. Let's go back downstairs. Well, Mike, in the trenches right now, don't be surprised if Toledo has some success early running the football. Their offensive line is one pound heavier than Ohio State's offensive line, so believe me, all that meat can move some defensive linemen, Mike. Interesting points. Buckeyes have given up a few pounds on the defensive front. You look at this defensive front. I was talking to Fred Pugich yesterday. So it wasn't really until I watched the... West Virginia game as Damon Moore sticks his number 13 on Mel Long. Not too much yardage on that completion by Chris Wallace. But I was saying um, to Pug, I said, you know, I was watching the West Virginia game. I didn't realize really how young you guys were until watching you on national television. You got Bailey, mm -hmm. Wayne, Brown, Johnson, all sophomores. Pickett and Collins are both freshmen. And uh, Pug said, hey, they were pretty young in 1968 as well. Well, they believe speed is the answer also. You're going to see a bunch of guys, maybe eight, nine guys, roll in on that defensive front. They're going to try to keep fresh legs in, and they feel like that can be the difference going up against a big offensive line like Toledo's. Third and ten on the 34. Straight drop back. Wallace, not too much running room. He's going to be driven out of bounds. Matt LaVar is the closest. Given out at about the 38-yard line, so another kicking situation for the Rockets, and Chris Wallace continues to struggle here today. Well, you go over to the sidelines and say, hey, we moved the ball a little bit. We know that they're not invincible. 
you got to stay positive for your Toledo. It's not easy. This is a tough place. It's hot. It's a big game. A lot of uh, opposing fans here. This is an opposing stadium, but you got to stay cool. I, do, I will tell you this. I know Ohio State worked hard on blocking a kick this week. Lindstrom this time at the 22. Boston waiting back at his own 20-yard line. Third kick already in the first quarter. Boston fumbled it. Oh, it's Gary Berry back at the 20. He fumbled. So Boston and Berry both for the mishap. The Buckeyes, keep in mind, fumbled four times against West Virginia. They only lost one. But so far, Boston fumbled a punt. And now Gary Berry fumbles the punt. That's a problem with concentration. And I know Coach Cooper was not happy with that at all last week. The Buckeyes put the ball on the carpet. Fortunately, did not lose it against West Virginia. It's like he made a basket there, went right through the hoop. You will not see Gary Berry do that very often. Gary Berry, a talented football player from right here in Columbus out of DeSales, able to pick the football up. He may get yelled at for not just falling on that football. You know, they tell you if you do put it down, get on top of it. Don't try to pick it up, but Gary did pick it up and was successful. Another fumble by Ohio State. There's a scramble at the 25-yard line. It looks like the Buckeyes did recover. Quick hitter to the fullback. And he dropped the football. Two straight plays, the Buckeyes putting the ball on the field. Oh. The meetings will not be fun come Monday when the Buckeyes look at the videotape. And the turnover margin, Dom, uh, this is what coaches love. I know years ago, before the Buckeyes really got it turned around, John Cooper said that's one of the most important stats right there in college football. You don't want to give up the football. Jermaine, boy, checked off at least two or three receivers that time before he throws a little too high for Boston at the 28-yard line. Well, as a coach, you never want to beat yourself. It's one thing if you go out and your opponent is better than you, and he literally beats you. But when you put the ball on the carpet, when you, when you uh, get the ball intercepted, you're beating yourself. And so far, Ohio State, on this series at least, has beat itself. David Boston now has caught a football in 22 consecutive games for Ohio State. Shotgun formation this time for Jermaine on third and nine. Lots of time. A little miscommunication that time. D. Miller turned in and the ball went to the outside. So this time, Brent Bartholomew will get a chance to play some football. You're on the number one team in all of college football. Sometimes if you're the punter, you probably get kind of bored and kind of rusty on the sidelines, but... Last year, the number one punter in the Big Ten finally takes the field. He'll kick it at about the 10-yard line. Not a real good series there on the part of Ohio State, but you got to give some credit to Toledo. These guys came in here. They're playing uh, game football. They're keeping their heads up. They're trying to make some things happen. Down 21-0. Good kick by Bartholomew. Turner is driven back to the 20-yard line. He's got some running room up across the 35. And he's tripped up at the 40, Matt LeVar. Got a hand on his ankle, and Turner goes down with a nice return. So the Rockets with some decent uh, field position this time. Checking out some other scores around the country. They see no score, number five, Kansas State. Penn State winning big. Joe Paul looking for career win number 300. And the Cavaliers up on Maryland in the second, right before the half. And another MAC team taking on the Big Ten. The Wisconsin Badgers up by a couple of touchdowns. Iowa, Iowa State, Iowa, State. Iowa. Iowa Hawkeyes struggled with Central Michigan for the first half a week ago. I was in Iowa City. It was only seven to nothing over Central Michigan. The Hawkeyes finally won that one, 38 to nothing. Andy Katzenmeyer says, "You're not going anywhere, buddy." And a loss of two or possibly three on the play. Another Big Ten school, Purdue, after that tough opener in the Coliseum on Los Angeles. They're up by a touchdown over the uh, Rice Owls. And Duke over Northwestern, 7-3 early. You know, Andy Katzenmoyer is not only built like Adonis, he has such great speed and movement and gets to the football in such a hurry. Prototype linebacker. He may write the book. It, they, they may name awards after this guy when he's all done. Wallace trying to buy some time. A little fake the quick pitch. And it's incomplete to the tight end to Mike Billick. He was open. But Wallace overshot him. So the Rockets. 
familiar sight, facing another third down situation here in the first quarter. One of the goals of Ohio State was to get more pressure on the quarterback this year. They did a good job against West Virginia. They're doing a good job here today against Toledo. Billick, the tight end, last year averaged 17 yards a catch. Well, facing a third down, Pinkle wants to call a timeout and talk it over. We'll keep it right here in the horseshoe. Chris Wallace out of Springfield South, three times named the MAC Player of the Week a year ago. He talked about the fact he had 27 touchdown passes shattered, the old record by 10 at Toledo. The boy, he's having a hard time finding his receivers with those scarlet and gray jerseys all over him here in the first quarter. To get inside the huddle of your favorite Big Ten team, go online at www.bigten.org for all the football and conference news from around the Big Ten. Beautiful Saturday afternoon in Columbus, Ohio, where the number one ranked Buckeyes came out and flexed their muscles early, Dom. I guess uh, if there was any chance of them taking uh, the Rockets lightly, it didn't happen. We're talking with Gary Pinkle yesterday, and he said, hey, these are still kids. I don't care what the coaching staff says. These Buckeyes are going to take my kids, or hopefully they'll take my kids lightly. And right now you look at the scoreboard, and it looks like that's not the case. Didn't happen. And talking to John Cooper earlier this week, he said, you know, some of the fans may not think that much of Toledo, but I'll tell you what, they hand out scholarships just like we do. There's guys playing for Toledo. As a matter of fact, it could be at Ohio State that we either missed on or, or, or we did not get, and there's some guys we would love to have. He said, I know that I'm not taking Toledo lightly, and I can guarantee you my football team won't, and that certainly has been the case so far here in this ball game. Well, the Rockets started 8-0 last year. They'll swing pass. It's Harris, and he has run down immediately. James Cotton catches him from the far side. The opposite side defensive end spot, so it's going to bring up another kicking situation for the Rockets. A lot of people think this defense reminds them of the 96 defense Ohio State had. The 11 silver bullets. These guys swarmed to the football. Very quick. Very athletic. There's some guys out there that uh, down the road we'll be seeing playing on Sunday afternoons. There's no question about that. Lindstrom on the kick again for the Rockets at the 25-yard line. Gary Berry stays in at the 20. Fumble the last. It's a short kick. It was almost blocked. Percy King almost touches it. Berry's going to try to return it. Puts his head down. Gets across the 30 up to about the 32-yard line. John Cooper calls the punt return team the score team. He believes that the punt team, punt return team should score some touchdowns. But looking at the numbers so far, Joe Germain has owned this ball game. Chris Wallace, 211 yards against the Temple Owls, but he's finding out he's not playing the Temple Owls here this afternoon. Buckeyes starting at their own 32-yard line. They start with the I formation. Joe Montgomery, this time he has some running room. Power run up near the 40. Takes four or five rockets to finally bring him down, and Jameel Turner making the first hit for Toledo. Well, we talked earlier about Washon Tate. How he missed two years because of a devastating knee injury. Well, it was back in 1996 against Minnesota that Joe Montgomery, number 33, blew out his knee. And he is that power back that Ohio State fans like to see. He's a guy that uh, will put his head down, try to run people over. And uh, he had a devastating knee injury back in 96. They didn't think he'd play football again. Well, one, yeah. D. Miller, quick out. He's up near the 45-yard line before he's driven out of bounds. You talk about Montgomery, Mike. I remember talking to some of the medical staff, and the question back in 96 was not whether or not Joe would ever be able to play football again, but whether he'd be able to walk without a limp. And it's just a credit to the medical staff they have here at Ohio State, able to rehab him, get him back. Last year was a bit of a frustrating year, required another surgery at the end of last season's clear, clean up some scar tissue, but he's back and ben says he feels 100%. Bentley flags on the field. And Montgomery, we all remember that uh, devastating knee injury against Minnesota, fresh off the 160-yard game at Iowa. Prior to the snap, we have a substitution infraction. 12 men in the huddle. Five-yard penalty. 12 men in the huddle against first. Ohio State. Those are the kind of things, if you've been around John Cooper, those are the kind of things he hates to see. <laughs> and if the picture could tell a thousand words, yeah. Buckeyes had an extra tight end on the field that time. Let's go downstairs to Ryan Miller. 
Well, Mike, they're starting to roll some of these younger guys in and get some playing time with the score 21 to nothing just before the end of the first quarter. I think you're going to see even more younger talent coming in for the Buckeyes. Jamar Martin already is in the game. Henry Fleming and Tam Hopkins are both right now on the offensive line. So these younger guys are going to see some playing time before it's all said and done. No doubt about that. First and 15, the ball at the 40. Jermaine. He makes the rush almost picked off. Wisniewski dropped the football as he spun. As and the Rockets the almost had it. Ira Singleton at the 40, but he dropped it as well. Well, Joe Germain was feeling the pressure. Avoided the sack. Take a look from this angle. See Joe roll out. Number 84, Steve Wisniewski. Joe steps up, fires the ball. And I'll tell you what, Wisniewski should have caught that football. That hit him right in the hands. That's one he'll look at on Monday and say, wow, I should have caught that football. Talking with Mike Jacobs, I thought uh, Joe looked a little more mobile. And he said, that's not really the case. We just want him to run the ball, a lot like Bobby Hoying in his senior year. They told him, sometimes you have to tuck it up and run it. Complete to Boston again at the 45-yard line. He steps out of bounds. Given out by Keith Travis, who had seven tackles against Temple a week ago. Buckeyes implementing the shotgun this year. As mentioned, the offensive line has made great improvements as far as run blocking. There's still some question marks as far as the pass blocking. And Joe Germain, I want to say, was fact sacked four times against West Virginia, but it wasn't so much that concerned the coaches. Obviously, the sacks do, but it was the number of times he was hit as he released the football. Well, Germain doing a nice job of picking up the corner blitz that time. It looked like Malin wants to come again. This time... Jermaine undershoots his man, D. Miller, at the 40-yard line. But as soon as he let go of the football, he was hit by Corey Morris. That's what I'm talking about, Mike. Gets hit from behind just as he releases the football. That happened numerous times last week against West Virginia. I want to say this is the first time it's happened in this game. And so the Buckeyes using the shotgun, rolling him out, try to buy him a little bit more protection. Well, nothing like the Florida State game, though, huh? Well, he took a hit in that game. Well, as I mentioned, his daddy rides them Brahma Bulls when he was younger. That's where uh, that's where Big Joe got his uh, toughness because there was one hit in that ball game. I remember we were watching it. He about got cut in half, and he got up. Bartholomew, nice high kick again. Harris with the fair catch. Let's it roll. It goes into the end zone of the Rockets. We'll start from the 20-yard line. So Brent Bartholomew with a 56-yard kick. Senior out of Florida. The Buckeyes up with 23 seconds to go in the opening quarter, up by three touchdowns. And let's uh, reminisce this first quarter here from the Horseshoe. Michael Wiley with 140 yards against West Virginia. Nice cutback, nice block by Keller. He has gone 76 yards for the game's first touchdown. Dee Miller with a nice little block there to help him get into the end zone. Yeah, this time Joe Germain. But a wide open D. Miller. D. Miller making himself one of the top receivers in all of college football. That one for 37 yards. And once again, Chris Wallace is running for his life. And number 19, Ahmed Plummer. Read that one all the way. He was just uh, dying for the pick. But Wallace uh, very smartly throws it out of bounds. Brent Johnson putting pressure on Wallace that time. Did the smart thing because he had nowhere to go. The receivers were covered well. And he was literally running for his life. He was running backwards, ran out of real estate, and did the smart thing, threw the ball to the popcorn seats. Get it out of bounds. Well, Chris Wallace threw for more than 200 yards and 10 of the Rockets' 12 games last year. Right now, his numbers are anemic against this uh, defense. That finished uh, number two in scoring defense of the nation in 96 and 97. We'll talk more about that later in the broadcast, considering the fact they lost so many players from the 96 team. Wallace lays it up there, and it is picked off by Ohio State. It's Plummer. On the preceding play, I said Plummer was licking his chops. But Plummer with five picks. You know, Mike, you talk to these Ohio State defensive backs, Ahmed Plummer or Antoine Winfield, and they'll tell you when the football is in the air, they love it when football teams come in here and throw the ball against them because they feel like when the ball is in the air, Hey, that gives them the best opportunity to get an interception because unless it's in the air, you can't get one. But they also feel like that football is going to be theirs. Laid out for it, brought it in, and the Buckeyes with yet another turnover here in this fourth quarter. Ahmed Plummer, three-time OSU scholar-athletes, five picks last year. 
Right now they have the ball at the 45-yard line of the Rockets. 12 seconds to work with before they put this first quarter in the books. D. Miller gets his second carry as a Buckeye, his first coming last week, cuts it back inside, and he picks up maybe three, possibly four on the play. Beckwith uh, coming up to make the stop once again. He had nine tackles against West Virginia last week. So we played 15 minutes of football. The Buckeyes 21-0 over Toledo. And you're watching Big Ten Football from ESPN+. Plus. Played 15 minutes of football in Columbus, Ohio. The Buckeyes up by three touchdowns. And Ohio State's renovation coming up on the horseshoe. And, of course, across the street, boy, this will be second to none in the Big Ten. The Schottenstein Center getting ready to open this year for Jim O'Brien's basketball Buckeyes. On the John Markle's hockey team. Went to the NCAAs last year. Buckeye fans anticipating that beautiful edifice. Second down, six at the 41-yard line. I formation, Keller. Backed by Michael Wiley. Wiley. He's got the lane. And Wiley picks up the first down for Ohio State. Andy Boyd coming up to make the stop before Toledo. Andy Boyd, redshirt freshman, 16 tackles in the spring game for the Rockets, getting some playing time against the number one team in college football. So now the Buckeyes with another first down, moving the chains. Here we go, averaging 34 points a game, or 30, 30 points a game, 34 against West Virginia a week ago. Bottom of your screen is David Boston. They go the other way. It's Wiley, the short side of the field. Tries to turn the corner, but he's driven out of bounds by Jameel Turner. Michael Wiley did a good job of reading his blocks. His offensive lineman able to get a stalemate, and he kicked it outside, Mike. Well, Joe Germain, we said after uh, the last two years sharing time with Stanley Jackson, passed for 300 yards a week ago. Look at that. After 15 minutes, these are the kind of games you'd say, hey, let me at least play for three quarters. And Chris Wallace threw those 27 touchdown strikes a year ago with a minus one in passing. Wiley is hit hard from the blind side, but not before he gets up close to another first down. Matt Valens, the senior linebacker, Make it initial contact for the Rockets. Mike Wiley heading for the outside, and then at the last minute decided to cut back up and able to get the first down. He looks like he's uh, a little shaken up. He got hit maybe by four or five Rockets that time, and Joe Montgomery will give him a spell. A week ago, Wiley with 140. Joe Montgomery picked up 56 yards on 12 carries a week ago. And for last year when he played here, he got a standing ovation after fighting back from that serious knee injury. This time, a quick opening. It's Keller. He's got some running room. Keller down to the 10-yard line. Matt Keller stopped by Kelly Herndon, the cornerback. The 6-foot, 238-pound junior out of Moeller High School, playing about 10 pounds lighter than a year ago. Matt Keller, the Buckeye fullback. He told me earlier this week that anytime he touches the ball, he wants to try to score. Look at the size of that hole. He's a hard runner, I'll tell you this kid is. He says every time he touches the ball, he tries to score a touchdown. Only well, carried it twice against West Virginia, but for 16 yards, averaged eight yards a crack. Joe Montgomery, good cutback. Montgomery can spell the end zone. Touchdown, Joe Montgomery. And a great block there to clear Joe Montgomery by number 23. We were just talking about him. Matt Keller. I said, Matt, what do you feel better about scoring touchdowns or throwing that big block that leads to a touchdown? He said, well, I'll be honest with you, I like getting in the end zone. But there you see number 23 gets that block in there. Joe reads the block perfect, cuts it back in. And Montgomery gets into the end zone. He's come a long, long way from that knee surgery. Boy, he's come a long way since he stepped on campus here at Ohio State. Stoltz, his fourth kick of the afternoon. And he drills it to the uprights. 13 to 37 to go in the first half from Ohio Stadium. The Buckeyes now lead it 28 to nothing thanks to number 33, Joe Montgomery. In Columbus, Ohio, not even close to the half of the Buckeyes open up a four touchdown lead. Appreciate you tuning in to ESPN Regional Television. There's, a, the there's a guy with, I'm sorry. The guy with the best uh, look in the house. 
keeping an eye on everybody. One of the uh, sheriff's deputies here in the stadium. It's a good time of the year to sit up there. Take on Illinois in November when the gale winds are howling. I don't know if I want to be up there. That's Dwayne Harris out of Columbus, and he's dying for a run back, but uh, Stoltz keeps driving him back into the end zone, so once again, the Rockets will start from the 20-yard line. John Cooper resting comfortably. Last scoring drive, six plays, 45 yards, so they've gone, what, 98, 55, 45? Gary Pinkle, exactly what he did not want to happen here. He said uh, yesterday that their goal in 1998 is to get back to that MAC championship game. They lost to Marshall last year. This game has no bearing on the MAC, but he definitely did not want to fall down 28 to nothing with loads of time to go in the half. Chris Wallace trying to get things going, trying to spread the field. Five receivers. Trips at the top of your screen. Three step drop, and Antoine Winfield almost had a pick. <laughs> When you talk about John Cooper winning 75 games in the 90s, well, Gary Pinkle's won a lot in the Mid-American Conference in the 90s as well. Gary Pinkle, the winningest coach of the 90s in the MAC, 60 games. They've been penciled in in the win column. And I'm sure there's plenty of football to go, but I'm sure you'd like to get out of the horseshoe here this afternoon, just uh, injury-free, so we can take aim at another MAC championship. Well, Sean Tate is met shoulder to shoulder with number 13, Damon Moore, making the initial stop for the Buckeyes. Number 13, Damon Moore stepping up, putting the big hit on. And right now, the Ohio State defense is not allowing Toledo to do anything. It's got to be frustrating right now if you're on the Toledo offense, just trying to find a way to move this football. Buckeye defense fired up. And, and many believe this Buckeye defense sets the mood for this football team. As the football team goes, I guess the Buckeye defense goes. You look at uh, Antoine Winfield, could win the Thorpe. Moore's a candidate. Gary Berry's a candidate. But then you compare it to uh, the 96th defensive secondary. Well, Ray Curry, the leading receiver from a week ago, finally touched the football, but the pass was behind him. And uh, Curry comes up empty. And Gabe Lindstrom, probably the most uh, worked rocket here this afternoon, on to punt the football again. You look at that 96 secondary, talking to John Tenuta yesterday, said, hey, you guys got the best secondary in the country. Does it compare to 96? He said, hey, let's slow down. You're talking about Sean Springs, Rob Kelly, uh, Ty Howard. All three of those players, of course, in the National Football League. Standing on the five-yard line, Lindstrom will kick again. Gary Berry at about the 39-40 yard line of Ohio State. Lots of pressure, but Lindstrom gets the end-over-end -end kick. And Berry at the 45, across midfield. And he's back in his own territory, thanks to good coverage that time by Toledo. Corey Morris coming up to make the stop for the Rockets. 12-29 to go, 28 to nothing. You're watching Big Ten Football on ESPN+. Plus. Back in Ohio Stadium in Columbus, the Buckeyes with one victory under the belt against West Virginia, awaiting the Missouri Tigers a week from now. Up 28 to nothing over the Rockets of Toledo, 12-29 to go in the first half. Buckeyes have it first and 10 of the 47-yard line. Jermaine swings it up to the fullback, and he is tripped up. By number 35, Justin Golden, a junior out of Dublin, Ohio. So big, big game for Justin Golden coming back home, the 6-foot, 195-pound junior. Updating other scores again, uh, other MAC teams in action. Kansas State over Northern Illinois right now in the first. Penn State, Joe Pa looking for number 300 all over Bowling Green. The Buckeyes keep it on the ground that time. Valent making the stop. Jonathan Wells getting some early playing time, the freshman. Virginia up on Maryland, the ACC, and up in Madison, the Ohio University Bobcats trailing by a couple of touchdowns. Boy, the Bobcats really had a tough time swallowing that loss to North Carolina State. The Iowa Hawkeyes trailing Iowa State. That, were, that one's being played in Iowa City as well, in Purdue now. Rice closing it on the Boilermakers. Duke up on Northwestern by a touchdown. Keep it on the ground again. Inside the 45-yard line, down to about the 43. So Jonathan Wells getting some playing time in his first game in West Virginia, getting some early playing time here 
today. 6'1", 220-pound freshman out of River Ridge, Louisiana. A lot of kids, uh, a lot of folks think this kid uh, reminds them of Eddie George. Of course, Eddie George, the great running back here at Ohio State, went on to win the Heisman Trophy. This kid's big, strong, runs well, somewhat of a power back. What do you think? You look a little bit like Eddie to you? <laughs> well, he averaged 6.8 yards every time he touched the football a week ago. His first college football game. This time, uh, Jameel Turner won't allow him to turn the corner. In high school, this guy averaged 10 yards every time he carried the football a senior year. <laughs> Some monster numbers. The Owls having a hard time scoring against these Rockets. Finally losing it uh, by 10 last week. The numbers, not quite the same story, getting up four touchdowns against this Ohio State football team. And Gary Pinkle did say he enjoys playing Big Ten football teams yesterday, but it's not the same when you're playing the number one team in the country. Play action over the middle. And it's tipped. Otherwise, it would have been complete to Wisniewski. He was wide open, tipped just at the last minute. Boy, Matt Balin's going to relive that one uh, later this afternoon. He should have had a pick, probably. Take another look at it from the end zone. Play action. Joe drops back. And, boy, he should have picked that one off. Valen doing a nice job of dropping back into his zone that time. Valen, a former walk-on. This is his third year starting now for the Rockets. And Wisniewski has got to be thinking, geez, I don't see that many balls come my way. Kevin Griffin over the middle. It's complete at the 25-yard line. It's Redmond this time. Boy, Redmond coming back, remember last year in Wyoming, the opening game, he broke his leg. They've got some receivers on this football team. Isoed on Joe, good protection, good grab. Talk about Redmond, Reggie Germany, David Boston, D. Miller. Well, Joe Germain has thrown a touchdown pass in 10 consecutive games now. He has two here this afternoon. High formation, Martin and Wells, two true freshmen. Some pressure, and Reggie Germany can't catch up to it at the 20-yard line. So the Buckeyes will be facing a third down situation as they're knocking on the door of the red zone. Number 10, Keith Travis, seven tackles and a sack a week ago. And I'm sure he's feeling the heat down there on the floor of Ohio Stadium this afternoon playing the number one team in college football. It has to be 80 85, possibly 90 degrees out there. It is warm, and uh, I know both these football teams pride themselves on conditioning. The dog days of summer, that's where it pays off. Hot days like this. That's Germany at the top of your screen. This time they'll keep it on the ground. It's Wells. He's got some running room at the 20, and he's dragged down by number two, Ira Singleton, the free safety. And if Singleton had not hustled over there to drag him down, there was some running room, and Wells definitely would have turned the corner. For a big guy, I'll tell you what, he's able to pick his way through this hole, hits the hole hard, then cuts left, makes a miss, and then brought down from behind. People very excited. Remember, folks, this is a true freshman. This time last year, he was playing high school football. Boy, that's got to be, it's got to be a thrill going from high school to playing for the 95, 96,000 people. First time he come running down the tunnel. This time it's Wells. He stopped at the line of scrimmage, lunges forward, a possible gain of one but it's going to bring up a fourth down Adam Matora who had a couple of sacks last week uh, makes the stop for the Rockets you talk about these true freshmen and what they must be feeling of course the Buckeyes opened with a big game last week on the road at West Virginia but there's nothing like running out to that tunnel for the first time in Ohio Stadium 90,000 plus cheering fans these guys get goosebumps no question so Stoltz will attempt a 36-yard field goal. Last year, he was 5 for 5 from this distance. And the kick is up. And it's off to the right. So Danny Stoltz, who had 92 points in 1997, is five points shy of Vlade Yanikievsky back in 1979. Stoltz was 15 of 25, kicking it last year. And that's his second miss. He missed a 40-yarder at West Virginia. Buckeyes getting it done offensively, but uh, certainly doing their work defensively as well, Dom. 
Well, the Buckeye defense are working hard. And as we said earlier, when the football's in the air, they feel like it is theirs. There you see Damon Moore, number 13, coming up with that one. Up in the air again. And that's Ahmad Plummer going after the football, laying out for it. So the Rockets trying to do some damage now, and Wallace, one step drop and threw it right into the ground as the intended receiver, Mel Long, didn't have a chance to catch that football. Even if he had number 20, Central McClellan was on him like flies on a picnic. I don't think you can blame him, but I think we're beginning to see maybe a little frustration on the part of Chris Wallace. He has not had a lot of time back there to throw the football, has felt the pressure, tried a quick hitter, simply threw it in the ground. You saw those numbers, 0.3 yards on first down. That's that's when really frustration starts to get into a quarterback. You've ever played quarterback and you, the defense is all over you. You start second guessing yourself every time, just like that time right there. Another interception, it's Diggs. Niall Diggs at the 10, fighting his way, knocked out of bounds at about the five yard line. The third interception for Ohio State this afternoon. Tell you what, Chris Wallace took a big hit. He was very slow in getting up. And doesn't look real healthy there as he jogs off the field. He's got to be a very frustrated young man. There he is looking for someone to get the ball off to. And wow. The pressure's there. Looks like the big cat was there first. And we'll take another look at the interception. Fake pumps once. Lays it down just to under throws it. He was getting hit as he released the football. Number 32, Niall Diggs there. Johnny on the spot. And the Buckeyes have come up with now three interceptions in this ball game. And yeah, they are knocking on the door at the inside the six yard line. And Wallace, you have to feel for the young man. Considering last year he passed for nearly 3,000 yards, 27 touchdowns, nine interceptions. He's got three here this afternoon. Jermaine quickly goes for the juggler, and Reggie Germany lights up the board with another touchdown for the Buckeyes. He was wide open. Beat Jamal Turner on the play. Nothing real fancy. Reggie Germany, number 80. Looks like he's going to go in. And then at the last minute, jumps out. And he is wide open. We have seen some wide open Buckeyes. I'll tell you what, Mike, I think I could have caught that one. That open. Well, I don't know. I think you would have tripped. I was an offensive center, you know, they, Stonehand. They timed it well, but I think as the ball was released, you might have tripped and fell. <laughs> Thanks. Stoltz drills it through the uprights. And the Buckeyes with 8.43 to go in the first half. They both open up a 35-0 lead over the Rockets of Toledo. Back in Ohio Stadium, and John Cooper says honesty is always the best policy. I always tell his players the best will play. Against West Virginia, 10 of first-year players logged the playing time against the Mountaineers. Six true freshmen. And now as Harris awaits the kick, I think we're going to see a lot of true freshmen maybe here this afternoon. Short kick this time by Ohio State. And Belisari's down there quickly. And I'm telling you, he put his number eights all over Curry that time. He rang his bell. Steve Belisari will hit you. Number eight, of course, his brother was a captain here. Greg Belisari, a linebacker. He came in here as a quarterback, and they said, hey, we want you to move the defense, play in the secondary, play on special teams. John Cooper likes to say, if a dog bites, he'll bite as a pup. Well, Belisari is a pup. What do you think? Is he biting? He's biting. He sharpened his teeth yesterday. No yeah. about it. I mean, he was number three. Here he is, a quarterback. He's number three on the depth chart as a safety. That's got to be a thrill. Wallace finally has some playing time and overshoots his man. At about the midfield strike. Whoever shoots number 29, Mace Freeman. Freeman had a big year last year. 30 catches for 418 yards. A couple of grabs a week ago, but that time he had no prayer of catching the football. Unfortunately, too, for Wallace, he finally had some time to throw it. You know, Mike, we talked earlier during pregame warm-ups. We were commenting on the arm that Chris Wallace had. You just saw right there, he can throw a rope. He had some steam behind that football, but unfortunately sailed over the receiver's head. But again, if you've ever played quarterback, you got a feel for the young man because that Buckeye defense has been all over him. You can't blame him for rushing his throws. And here's a guy who's put up some huge numbers. And now he finally completes it, but they drop the football at the 30-yard line. So they finally get one to Jason Turner. And he turned around, came back for it, as a good receiver would, but he dropped the football. 
And of course, you were an outstanding quarterback. And did you ever have a day like this? <laughs> I don't know if I'd go that far if I was an outstanding quarterback. There you see, that's good coverage. John Tanuta is the defensive back coach at Ohio State. He teaches his guys to stay, be physical, stay on the receiver. I think that's a pretty good job right there. Spreading the field, twins to the bottom of your screen. The Buckeyes almost jump. They do. They are called for the offside. Prior to snaps, illegal contact. Defense, five-yard penalty. Down remains third. True freshman Ryan Pickett that time. One of the top 25 players in the country coming out of high school. As John Cooper watches his team roll towards his 77th win in the 90s. John Cooper with the number one team in college football. Looks like the Buckeyes are showing some blitz. The Big Cat ready to come. Wallace swings it out. Sean Tate spins and he is driven to the ground. And Ryan Pickett explodes a lot like Luke Fickle used to do for the Buckeyes. And he put a hit there. I'll tell you what. That was a wake-up call. You know, we talked earlier about Coop saying if a dog will bite, the bite is a pup. Ryan Pickett is one of those pups. Take a look at this. Number 79 will step up. And that's a hit. <laughs> wow. Katzenmeyer couldn't wait to do it, but Pickett beat him to the punch. Wow. Right now, fourth down, they step up. Looked like they're going in punt formation, but instead, they come out passing the football, and it's complete to Kreitzberg. But is it enough for the first down? It doesn't look to be. With 7.40, that's a gutsy call, but I guess when you're down 35 nothing, you got to give credit to Pinkle, trying to get things done. Kreitzberg, their leading receiver from a year ago, So Dan Cole, the backup quarterback, came in. And they're going to bring on the change, Dom. It appears short from up here. We have somewhat of a bad angle to it. But I'm going to tend to agree with you. From here, it does not look like he made it. Well, I take my hat off for the call to Gary Pinkle. But the ball was thrown a little bit low. And Brock Kreitzberg. Had to go down for it. Comes up a little bit shy. And Gary Pinkle once again will send his defense on the field. And the Buckeyes with great field position at the 36-yard line. Well, if you're going to go down, you might as well go down swinging. And this is a scrappy group that's come down here from Toledo. Once again, this team has picked to win the MAC. When we talked to Gary Pinkle. He said, yeah, this is a big game. Sure, we'd like to win it, but it has nothing to do with what we can do in the MAC championship. And a switch at quarterback Mark Garcia now calling the shots for John Cooper's Buckeyes. And Derek Combs bounces to the outside. Combs cuts it back at the 30, and he's dropped at the 26-yard line. Bonnie dropped down. But Derek Combs is picking up some considerable yardage. So Mark Garcia, boy, if you want to can the frustration, if you could sell it, this guy does a great job of keeping his composure, but I'm sure he has to feel some frustration. Recruited out of Modesto Junior College, the number one J.C. quarterback in the country. Recruited Mike Gurr is banged up there for the Buckeyes. Getting back to Garcia. Walt Harris brought him here. Everybody thought when Bobby Hoyne left, it would be between Stan Jackson and Mark Garcia. Garcia goes down with the, the knee injury, and Joe Germain surfaces and becomes one of the better quarterbacks in the country. Combs spins, tries to get down close to the 20-yard line. Stop just shy of the 20. So the Buckeyes exploding, moving the change. Their first eight possessions here today. At over 500 yards a week ago, 280 total yards on their first eight possessions. And look at the field position, huh? It's not a bad day at the office, is it? Coming to the horseshoe and starting from their own 49-yard line. That's uh, not bad field position. So Garcia, who had 40 touchdowns, the sophomore year in J.C. Combs nowhere to go that time. A loss on the play. Derek Combs, number 43, a running back out of Grove City, suburb of Columbus. 
an exciting player in high school. I'm talking to Tim Spencer, who coaches the running back, says this guy's got exceptional speed, quickness, but unfortunately, sometimes he doesn't do what he's supposed to do on a play. Says, but once this guy gets up the speed on everything, he's a guy that that we'll see more and more playing time. Yeah, John Cooper said that he probably should have played him maybe a little bit more last week. I know he really loves his breakaway speed. Coming with the blitz this time, and he swings it out to Combs. Combs, and he's going to be hit by a host of uh, rockets. Stopped at about the 26-yard line. Matt Valen uh, leading the parade for Toledo that time. And so Mark Garcia does not move the chains, bring up a kicking situation on fourth down. Good job there on the part of Toledo. Able to string it out. Swing pass out to number 43. Derek Combs. Combs with three white jerseys there. The fourth man comes in to bring him down. Good job there on the part of Toledo to string it out and keep him to no gain. Bartholomew will spot, spot this one at the 34. It'll be a 44-yard kick. Stoltz was 4 of 11 from this distance a year ago. And the kick is up. And it hits the upright. So he was wide right on the last kick. This time he hits the upright. So he's 0 for 2 in the field goal. 35 nothing, 456 to go. You're watching Big Ten Football from ESPN+. Plus. Go in Morgantown. Danny Stoltz kicked from 35, 36 and 40 yards. He's missed a couple here this afternoon on a day that everyone else is having a good time for Ohio State. This one was close, but not close enough. Wide right on the last one this time. A little off to the left. Hits the upright. So Chris Wallace now the 25-yard line. Well, another opportunity with 4.56 to go. Wallace hangs in there, continues the battle. A little low on his throw again this time. Another incomplete pass. They have not been able to do anything all day long on first down. You talked about that earlier, Mike, and the frustration really beginning to show on the part of Chris Wallace. That That is very tough when you find yourself second and ten. Well, and we talked about his 27 touchdown passes for Wallace a year ago. He had 38 in high school. 16 of the 38 went to D. Miller down at Springfield South. Well, after this play, I'll talk about a game when they played Centerville. Talk about some astronomical numbers. Second down and 10 of the 26. Harris, no place to go. He runs into a scarlet and gray wall as he tries to hit the left side of the line. Right now, Ohio State's defensive front is winning the battle of the trenches. On that play, the defense able to push the offensive line back. He ran right into a wall. of his. He basically ran into his own men. Look at the numbers there now. A lot of second stringers in there. Yeah. Heath Queen making that initial contact. So now it's a third and 11 at the 25 yard line. Loss of one on the play. Twin receivers top of your screen. Here come the Buckeyes. This time it's complete. Mel Long over the 30 and four Buckeyes will finally wrestle him out of bounds. David Mitchell, number three out of Westerville, coming up to make the first stop for Ohio State. And it really doesn't get any easier when you see some of these second teamers come in. These guys are all fighting for playing time. John Cooper often talks about the fact when those guys get in there, they try to make things happen. They're trying to get noticed by the coaches. Well, the Rockets uh, last time faked the punt, but they dodged the bullet as the Buckeyes missed the field goal. But right now, the Rockets trailing with 3.39 to go in the first half. 35 zip, the Buckeyes. It's David Boston waiting for the kick at his own 36-yard line. This time, Lindstrom gets off a of beauty. Boston backing up to his own 20. Body gets it at the 15-yard line. And he's got a lane, and David Boston cuts it back to the outside. Boston at the midfield stripe finally lunges forward and is stopped at the 46 of Toledo. It's one thing about those beautiful kicks. It's going to give the runner a chance to return it. He really drove him back, but there was a nice lane. Good blocking that time by Ohio State on the special teams. He goes all the way back to get it. And as I said earlier, John Cooper doesn't call it the punt return team. He calls it the score team. He believes you should score touchdowns off a punt return. And David Boston breaking some tackles. Tried to cut back there, but ran out of room. Garcia play action. He wants to go for the home run ball. 
Going down, he's got Reggie Germany. Germany's second touchdown of the day, his second touchdown as a Buckeye, and Garcia has to feel pretty good about that one. Just speed. Ohio State showing its speed. Reggie Germany able to get behind the defenders. And Mark Garcia, you know, we talked about this kid. A lot of people thought he was going to come in here and be the starter. You talked about that knee injury, and that's how close the competition is here at Ohio State. Garcia lays it out perfectly, and Germany will haul it in. What a nice pass. Stoltz back on to Mark Garcia, who was 9 of 23 for 175 yards a year ago, trying to fight for some playing time. Throws a beautiful ball that time on a 47-yard touchdown strike to Reggie Germany. And Stoltz in the extra point department is perfect on the afternoon. And the Buckeyes light up the scoreboard with another seven. That's 42 on the day, 42 to nothing with three minutes to go. You know, Mike, it's too bad both Joe Germain and Mark Garcia are both seniors. And, of course, you can only start one quarterback. Garcia would be playing as starter for a lot of teams around the country. Play action. What a pretty pass. Lays it up perfectly. And here comes number 80. Wow. That's big time. 6 295 pound sophomore of Hazelwood, Missouri. It's Reggie Germany, Mark Garcia out of California. He's been waiting a long time for his chance. You look at Mark Garcia and uh, some of the trials and tribulations he's been through here at Columbus. A lot of people are hoping, because you said obviously only one quarterback can play, a lot of people are hoping his strong right arm will get him a shot in the National Football League, despite the fact that he's going to back up Joe Germain here this year. I think people will know all about Mark Garcia. These pro scouts come to camp, come to practice, and Mark Garcia gets just as many reps as Joe Germain because, let's face it, he's one play away from having to come into the ballgame. So Stoltz ready to kick off again. One of the better kickers in the Big Ten hasn't had a great day this afternoon. This time... Drives Harris back into the end zone again. Harris is going to take it out this time. He said, I'm tired of downing it, bring it up to the 20. He gets up to about the 18-yard line. Mike Leeson, Don Tiberi, and Ryan Miller with ESPN Regional Television. We're at the Horseshoe in Columbus, Ohio. For the number one team in all of college football has opened up a 42-0 lead over the Rockets of Toledo. This is an exciting day, Mike, here for Ohio State fans. The alumni band come back. Some of the former cheerleaders come back. First game here in the horseshoe this year. This time the Rockets go with the eye. And they're going to keep it on the ground. Rashawn Tate hits the right side of the line. Maybe picks up two at best up to the 20-yard line. Rashawn Tate, the first All-American in the history of Rocket football. Four separate surgeries on his knee last year. He injured it against Indiana in 1996. He sat out last year and was still named one of the team captains. Second down and eight. Ball at the 20-yard line. Rockets with two, 15 to work with. Keep it on the ground again. Tate's cut back across the 22. But will bring up another third down for the Rockets. A third and long. James Cotton coming up to make the stop for Ohio State. And ESPN's Kirk Herbstreet's wife on hand, Allison Herbstreet. In the middle there. One of the 96,000 enjoying this uh, beautiful Saturday afternoon. I think she'd be home watching her husband, huh? Former cheerleader here. This once a Buckeye, always a Buckeye. Nowhere to go that time. Once again, that scarlet and gray defense all over Tim Cheatwood. And the thing is, this is primarily Ohio State's second team defense. These guys fight for playing time, as I mentioned earlier. And there is a Buckeye cheerleader, at least today and maybe in the future. Obviously, the way she's... Uh, Donned in the scarlet and gray, she wants to cheer for Fred Pugich's defense as they're all over Chris Wallace. That time, Tim Cheatwood, who just switched to from safety to linebacker in spring. A lot of Buckeyes chomping at the bit for playing time here this afternoon. 
And you know, Mike, I think what this indicates is there's really not that big of a difference between the guys that are the starters for Ohio State and the guys that are on second string. Obviously, the cupboards are not bare here for John Cooper. Look at uh, some of the staff here for Ohio State. You have Mike Jacobs, who's the offensive coordinator, assistant coach in 79 for the Rockets. Sean Sims, running back coach for Toledo for four years. Chuck Stobart, wide receivers coach for the Buckeyes, the head coach for Toledo, 77 through 81. Last week, Jacobs goes into West Virginia. Mm -hmm. I said it had to be sweet to picking up a win. Although probably not too sweet beating up on your old buddies. He said, hey, if I could have beat him 100 to nothing, I would have. But I don't know how sweet this is going to be by the second half because Toledo has a fine football team. But uh, right now they're mismatched. Ohio State up 42 to nothing with uh, over a half to play. Punting situation for Lindstrom once again, kicking from his 10-yard line. Boston at the 42. Boston weaves his way down to about the 41-yard line of the Toledo Rockets. Well, Mike, as we talked earlier about Toledo, this is a very good football team. And the fact remains right now that they are down a bunch to Ohio State. This game has nothing to do with them as far as winning a MAC championship, as far as going to a bowl game. And I got to believe right now in the back of Gary Pinkle's mind is he's got to be hoping, all right, Let's not get anyone injured right now. I admired it yesterday. He told us, he said, hey, I don't worry about the schedules. I look at the schedule in the wintertime and we play them in the fall. But uh, I got to believe if you've done a great job like he has over the last uh, nine years at Toledo that you hate playing the number one team in the land. I mean, you have a chance of putting together one of those memorable seasons, like maybe even running the table in the Mid-American Conference. And, but, you know, the law of averages, they beat Purdue last year. Purdue had a fantastic year with 36 to 22, but it's not often you're going to walk into the number one team in college football and pull off the upset. Garcia is still at quarterback. Plenty of time. Goes over the middle. Has Germany again inside the 30-yard line. And, of course, uh, Pinkle with his Washington ties back in 91. Washington won the national championship. The last time they actually played the number one team was in 87 when they went down to Miami, Florida. Miami won the national championship, so maybe history could repeat itself. Buckeye fans are hoping so. John Lumpkin over the middle. Lumpkin's down to the 10-yard line. And again, the Buckeyes are knocking on the door. Ohio State in the hurry-up offense. And the Buckeyes with many also on offense. Many of their second teamers out there, and these guys are going to compete. Going without the huddle now, 28 seconds to go. Lumpkin with one catch for 28 yards a week ago. He had three touchdowns last year. Swings it out. And Westbrook's inside the five-yard line. Boy, I almost said Eddie George, huh? Number 27. <laughs> You're going to get a chance to see Ohio State's stable of running backs. This is just another one of the guys. That, you know, you go to practice and you watch these guys play every day and you go, wow, how is Tim Spencer, the running backs coach, going to make all these guys happy? How's he going to get them enough playing time? And he told me, Dom, it's, it's not my job to make them happy. It's their job to make me happy. And in more particular, it's their job to make Coach Cooper happy. Because they do have some outstanding running backs here at Ohio State. You know, from top to bottom, all those coaches say that, you know? Yeah. They, they learn from the top and John Cooper... But boy, oh boy, they, uh, like we said earlier in the broadcast, Coop said honesty is the best policy. The best players will play. I mean, you take someone like Jerry Westbrooks, who just uh, picked up that big gainer for Ohio State. But boy, when he came out of high school, they said, boy, here's the next Eddie George. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember last year, of course, he switched over to defense, back to offense. But then you have guys like uh, Michael Wiley, who comes in, and first time he touches the football, he's, he, go he goes for a touchdown. Be interesting to see if Wiley starts the second half for the Buckeyes. I mean, obviously you don't want guys to get rusty. Garcia going for the corner, overshoots his man, looking for Germany again. That time it looked like Jimmy Redman and Germany actually were uh, crowding each other about two or three yards uh, deep into the end zone. But Garcia, I think, actually uh, maybe some miscommunication or wisely threw it out of the end zone. And you got to give it up to Toledo on that play. They had good defense. Had the receivers covered well. Garcia looked it over. He had time. Kept looking, kept looking, and said, uh-uh, I'm not going to throw an interception. Does the smart thing, throws it into the stands. That's what a veteran senior quarterback will give you, smart plays. Operative word there, veteran. Veteran hasn't seen a lot of playing time. Jonathan Wells, he's going to throw it. 
Wow. Oh, John Lumpkin was there. And the freshman, Wells, throwing back across his body, which is very difficult to do. Running left, throwing right. And he failed to hook up with Big Lump. He was wide open, too. I guarantee you they'll be kidding Jonathan Wells about this pass. There you go. As you said, very difficult to throw back against your body. Not a real good pass. I didn't see any spiral on that. Did you see any spiral? You know what? If you would have completed it, no one cares about the spiral. <laughs> All right. Bartholomew spotting it at the 11. Bobble the snap. And this time, Stoltz will not get a chance to kick it through. Three seconds to go before they put the first half in the Nesby books. The Rockets will take over deep in their territory. So even up 42-zip, uh, John Cooper does not like when his special teams bobble the football like this. Ohio State is not, uh, and that was just a, a low snap that came in on the ground. And special teams, John Cooper felt very good about special teams with his punter, Brett Bartholomew, his kicker, Dan Stoltz. Stoltz has missed two field goals, and, and that one, because of a bad snap, low. The holder unable to get, a, get his hands on it. Came in there fast and hot. And one bounced up. That will not sit well with that man right there. So wisely, uh, Chris Wallace will let the time expire off the clock here in Ohio Stadium. We played 30 minutes of football. The number one team in the country. Heading for the locker room, uh, leading the Rockets 42 to nothing. Buckeyes are coming back on the field, getting ready to get that second half rolling. There's your numbers, 42 to nothing. The number one ranked Buckeyes all over the Rockets in the first 30 minutes. Mike Leeson, along with Dom Tiberi and John Cooper, looking for win number 77 in the 90s. And uh, the Buckeyes didn't waste any time getting on the scoreboard early as Michael Wiley with 140 yards a week ago. Goes 76 on this one, Dom. Michael Wiley using his blocks well, gets out to the corner. Look at that explosiveness. Makes a miss, then picks up a big block there by D. Miller. Actually, D. kind of shield him, and Michael goes into the end zone. That's six points. And the Buckeyes who weren't finished yet. Nice interception. Athletic interception on the part of number 13, Damon Moore. Stepped in front to pull that ball in for an interception. Playing center field beautifully. That's why they say they have one of the best secondaries in the country. And you look at the numbers, it's all Ohio State. Ohio State with 397 total yards. Toledo with 35. Look at that. Ohio State with good field position. Those numbers don't lie. It has not been pretty Gary, if you're a Toledo fan. Gary Finkel, Dom, plus nine in the turnover ratio a year ago. Right now, they've uh, turned the football over three times. Nine interceptions for uh, Wallace in 1997. Three in the first 30 minutes here in the horseshoe. So the Toledo Rockets, who are taking aim at the MAC championship again this year, it's going to be interesting to see how they rebound from a 42-0 deficit here in the second half. Take a look at uh, the halftime leaders. Actually, uh, was Sean Tate with 28 yards. I wasn't, that surprised me. I didn't even think he got that far. And there you see for Ohio State, Joe Germain, 116 yards through the air, three touchdowns. Michael Wiley cracks the century mark, 112 yards. And Dom, you look at Ohio State with 42 points. If there's one uh, negative, if you're looking for uh, any negatives in a 42-0 ball game, would be the special teams play. Well, the special teams, I know John Cooper will not be happy with the way they put the ball on the carpet a couple times. Some missed uh, field goals. There you go. That is Gary Berry dropping the ball. Here you go. That's a low snap. Dan Stoltz trying to make the field goal. Didn't even get a chance on that one. He's missed two prior to that. John Cooper always talks about special teams, and I guarantee you he'll be talking to his club on Monday about it. Well, the Rockets will try to keep the football away from number five, uh, Michael Wiley, so they go towards Jonathan Wells, but it goes out of the end zone, so the Buckeyes will open up the second half here from the horseshoe from their own 20-yard line. 80 yards of green in front of them this time, up 42 to nothing. Buckeye offensive line, the starting offensive line, making the way onto the field. Coop feels they need a little more work. He calls those guys his hog mollies. I'm not sure what a hog molly is, <laughs> but you take a look at those guys. That line averages, what, 296 pounds? If you look up 
the word dictionary and hog molly. Do you expect to see those guys? Well, Pinkle says the Rockets are better up front this year, at least uh, athleticism wise. And he says if they're inexperienced, he looks at it on a positive frame of mind, calls it an opportunity. We'll see if they rise to the occasion. Lots of pressure. Germain steps up in the pocket, dumps it to his big tight end who's across the 35, up near the 35-yard line, up across the 30, up maybe to the 34. Big John Lumpkin, I'll tell you what, you talk about a big man, about 6'9", 260 pounds. Now Joe will feel the pressure. Nice fake. Looks for help. Here comes the pressure. Steps up in the pocket. Just a little dump off to big number 85, John Lumpkin. And as you can see, when you're 6'9", 260 pounds, it's not Big Lum that went down. The number's on Joe Germain. That's six cents as far as stepping up in the pocket. Some quarterbacks don't have it. And off goes to number five, Michael Wiley. 117 first half yards, 140 a week ago at West Virginia. You know, Mike, you talk about that sixth sense. That's what separates a great quarterback from a good one. The ability, you almost have to have eyes in the back of your head. You feel that pressure. You step up. And Joe Germain is so calm, so cool, so collected when he's in the pocket, feels that pressure, and never hesitates to step up. Well, it's his team now. He's a senior. It's going to be interesting to see if he gets a crack at the National Football League. Of course, he was already drafted by the Colorado Rockies in baseball. Wiley gets the call, cut back, across the 40, 45, and he's over the midfield strike, and he's finally dragged down by number two, Ira Singleton, but Michael Wiley continues to pad his stats this afternoon. And what we saw just right there is what has the Ohio State coaches so excited. Michael Wiley is now able to read the field, stutter step to the right, then comes back, runs to daylight, Wraps that football up. Now, Michael Wiley had a, some trouble putting the ball on the turf, but he says he's going to cover up big time this year. Wiley again tries to break into the outside, puts his shoulders down, and goes from the speedster to a punishing runner. And he knocks Jameel Turner down. But Wiley goes out of bounds, another considerable gain for Ohio State. Take another look at it. There's Michael. Runs to his left. And he puts that shoulder down, and he delivers the blow. He saw Big John Lumpkin do it a little bit ago and said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to try to do it. Michael Wiley in the back of his mind thinking, geez, leave me in long enough for a 200-yard gain. You know, you talk about the youth on the Ohio State defensive front. But Toledo, they closed the gap that time, a gain of one maybe. Toledo has a sophomore, a redshirt freshman, a sophomore and a redshirt freshman with two more true freshmen on, sitting in the two deep. So they are young and having baptized Tism by fire. Mark Garcia waiting his turn to return to the field. Garcia with a 40-yard touchdown strike in the first half. You know, you say, you, you, you hate to see a football game get out of hand like this, but these guys all want to play. They practice all week. They spend the year working out, waiting for these football games. They'll play 11 games. They want to play. First and 10, the ball at the 37-yard line. Twin receivers at the bottom of your screen. Jermaine, straight drop. Lots of time, and very wisely runs out of bounds at about the 36-yard line. Nobody was open. Good job there by Toledo with the pass defense. Jermaine had all day looked the field over, looked it over once, looked it over twice, did it one more time and said, uh-uh, nobody's open. I'm not going to force anything. Said, I'll pick up what I can and just ran out of bounds. You're sitting in uh, different parts of the country watching this broadcast and looking at number seven, Joe Germain. You look at his numbers coming out of the bullpen in a backup role <laughs> the last couple of years. 31 touchdowns over 3,000 yards. Definitely starting numbers. And number 33, Joe Montgomery. Definitely showing no ill effects from that knee surgery, dragging two or three rockets down near the 30 yard line. Kevin Rollins finally makes the stop. There's that power back that the Buckeye fans talked about a couple of years ago when Ohio State was down on the goal line. Looking to punch one in against Michigan, Mike. Joe Montgomery was not available because of that knee injury, but now he's back running hard. And that has Buckeye fans excited because number 33, a very hard runner. It's a great point to bring up. You talk to Joe Montgomery, and he's, uh, he'll tell you point blank that he would have scored against Michigan. Game played right here in the horseshoe. Quick drop, complete. Boston spins near the 20, down inside the 20 to the 19 yard line. Jermaine getting it done all phases of the game. Turner 
making the play defensively, but not until the Buckeyes pick up another first down. There's no question Joe Germain is an outstanding quarterback, but when you can play catch with guys like David Boston and Dee Miller, you're going to complete a lot of passes. There you see David Boston, 6'3", 250 pounds out of Humble, Texas. Boy, he got it done, too, both on football and basketball. Rumor had it he was going to play some hoops when he came to Ohio State, but now he's definitely focused on the NFL. D. Miller, and it's knocked away by number 11, Kelly Herndon. The 5'11", 180-pound senior out of Twinsburg, Ohio. Good job by Herndon there. Stayed with D. Miller. Looked back, kept an eye on Miller, saw Miller go up for the ball, makes the turn. That's one he's going to look back and say, man, I could have had an interception there. But good job on that play by Kelly Herndon. Instead of the INT, the Buckeyes facing a second and ten. The ball resting on the 19-yard line. This time, Wiley breaks off to the left side. Tries to cut it back in. He stopped at the 12. Finally brought down by number 10. That's Keith Travis with seven tackles and a sack a week ago. This rocket defense working overtime here this afternoon. Michael Wiley running hard. Number 23 is Matt Keller. Keller with the nice block. And see, that's the nice thing about Michael Wiley. All you need to do is hold up that defender, and he will get to the corner. Jermaine, quick drop, D. Miller. The 10-5. Walks the tightrope, and he finally goes out of bounds at about the three-yard line. He Look, could smell that end zone. Oh, yeah. He looked like one of the great Walendas there, trying to walk the tightrope and just lost his balance. He's going to have a lot more Buckeyes on the back of his helmet after this game. Just a one step back and fire it. On the part of Joe Germain, gets it out to Dean Miller. Tries to keep his balance, walking that tightrope. Goes out of bounds. Well, Miller with 58 catches for almost 1,000 yards, five touchdowns a year ago. Picking up where he left off his junior year. He's got a touchdown here today, two for the season. Michael Wiley will walk into the end zone, and Michael Wiley with his second touchdown of the afternoon. A little misdirection that time, and Toledo all went right defensively, and uh, Michael Wiley just uh, posted into the end zone. Well, the Buckeyes made it look very easy, easy there. Take a look. They will all go to the right. Everyone blocks to the right. The linebackers float right. Then they get caught coming back, and I mean, there's nobody around Michael Wiley. Well, Stoltz is on the field, drills the PAT, and the Buckeyes now, one point shy of 50. 49 to nothing, Michael Wiley. Another big afternoon for Ohio State. We're back with more college football after this. And it was a good look at the statue of former president of Ohio State, William Oxley Thompson, 1899 to 1925. And Looking down upon the Buckeyes as they open up a 49 to nothing lead. And the Buckeyes uh, keeping their fingers crossed, hoping for their first national championship since 1968. Ten uh, true freshmen playing a week ago. I think we're going to see a lot more players here in the second half. Joe Germain putting up some monster numbers again today. Senior out of Mesa, Arizona. Boy, really, you forget the Rose Bowl victory and all the touchdown passes he's thrown. As Harris finally gets some running room, and he's uh, stood up at about the 26-yard line. Good tackle that time. Uh, Greg S Simpson uh, out of Dublin, looks like, uh, made the stop. Derek Warnke might have made the initial contact there for Ohio State. 12 plays, 80 yards. Buckeyes continue to move the chains. Boy, they've gone 80, 98, 55. You name it, they've done it here this afternoon. Needed only a little over three minutes to score, too. Four receivers trying to spread that field. Wallace with the quick pass, and it's complete up across the 30 to about the 33-yard line. Looks like the big uh, tight end uh, that time of Mike Billick 
with the uh, reception. Let's go downstairs with Brian Miller. Well, thanks a lot, Mike. I tell you what, I just talked to Fred Pugich, and he said that right before this, they came out into the field, he just said that they were going to put the number one down. It doesn't look that way. We're seeing the number two already in there. I think we've seen enough of the big cat and company uh, for the rest of the day. Well, great uh, camera action on that note because you look at Central McClellan, and he could be a starter for any college football team at any level. He's played a lot of football, number 20 has. Had eight tackles last week in the backup role at West Virginia. He's played in 36 games the last three years. Wallace once again with no one to throw to, did the smart thing, threw the football out of bounds. And the Buckeyes, uh, Jason Otts, finally getting a chance to play some middle linebacker. Backing up Andy Katz some more. Of course, you're not going to see a lot of PT, but Otts, the Gatorade Player of the Year, uh, from the Cincinnati area, Elder High School. Straight drop, Wallace. Boy, he thought he had some running room, and that closed up quickly. Boy, that was like one of those holes in the National Football League. It's there, and it's gone. James Cotton. That was a bad pass on the part of Wallace. He's lucky that one didn't get picked off. There you see him drop back in the pocket. will close up rather quickly. Number 52, Cotton, will come in. He's hanging on him. And he threw that ball and literally threw it up for grounds. He's, he grabs. He's very lucky that was not picked off. James Cotton going from linebacker to the defensive end position out of San Francisco City College. Born and raised in Cleveland. Lindstrom, the punt again. Nate Clements, number 18, the true freshman. Let's it bounce. Goes inside the... 25, it's going to be down at about the 24-yard line. So we're going to take a break with 10 minutes and 5 seconds to go. It's 49-0 Buckeyes over the Rockets, and you're watching Big Ten Football from ESPN+. Plus. <laughs> Thanks the last uh, we've seen of Joe Germain as Mark Garcia comes back onto the field. Garcia, of course, with that 40-yard touchdown strike in the first half, equaling his touchdown totals of 1997. High formation. Hart, the freshman fullback. Joe Montgomery and Garcia took some heat. He got hit hard by number 45, Dewan Gould, out of Euclid High School. Mark Garcia did not see this coming. Gould put a big shot on him. Steps back, comes from the blind side, and just as he releases the football, gets it right in the back. Wow, Gould, the all-time sack leader, defensive player of the year by the Cleveland Plain Dealer at Euclid High School, almost had the sack that time. Tomorrow morning, Garcia will wake up with a little stiffness in his back after that one. So it's second and ten now, the ball at the 24. Quick pitch. Montgomery looking for some running room, puts his head down, but uh, again, Toledo rises to the occasion. Cornerback, Kelly Herndon, coming up to make the stop. Toledo stepping it up, strings it out. Nowhere to go. Two good plays. Let's listen uh, to this hit. Yeah, I'd say that uh, Kelly Herndon uh, put a hit on him that time at 5'11", 180 pounds. Joe Montgomery goes 5'11", 216. So Garcia at the controls. We'll talk about Jermaine's numbers. Heat again, so three straight good defensive plays by the Rockets that time. I'll tell you what, John Cooper's not going to be real happy, and I'd be interested to see what those, those offensive linemen, they got their heads down. They don't want to go over and see the coach. That's what you call the Olay block, the Matador block. At yeah, that time, it's Antoine Savage making the play for the Rockets. Well, the Buckeyes... Gave up a lot. I think 45 of those sacks might have came in the Sugar Bowl against Florida State. I mean, <laughs> Joe Germain, he showed a lot of courage coming back. As a matter of fact, Germain was watching film the day after the Sugar Bowl. I'll show you how he's looking forward to this season. Germain, 150 yards, three touchdowns on the day. And not too much running around that time as the Buckeyes. Great uh, coverage on the punt coverage team. 8.20 to go. 49 nothing Buckeyes, you're watching Big Ten Football from ESPN+. Plus. Well, to quote uh, Gary Pinkle, the head coach of the Toledo Rockets yesterday, the Buckeyes are loaded for bear. 
Nine players were named to at least one preseason All-American publication. And right now, the number one team in the land are leading 49 to nothing. And Brutus even getting a workout today. Single setback uh, for Chris Wallace, who's had a long afternoon. The record setter for the Rockets out of Springfield. And off, Dwayne Harris out of South High School in Columbus. A good run that time. Harris probably would have been a Buckeye, or at least uh, talking to Bill Conley yesterday. The Buckeyes definitely took a good, hard look at Harris after he came out of South High School. And at the time, he's turned it around, but at the time, his grades weren't up to par, so he didn't wind up wearing the scarf and gray, but definitely a talented athlete out of South. Matter of fact, in track, he qualified for the state finals in the 100, 200, and 400 meter dashes. Second and three, the ball at the 49 yard line. Four receivers. Quick drop. Mel Long with the completion. Down near the 45-yard line, but push back to the 46. Let's go downstairs to that former Buckeye, ferocious linebacker, number 43, Ryan Miller. Well, thank you very much, Mike. I'm standing here on the track that, believe it or not, they're going to take out starting in December of this year after the season. There's a whole reno renovation project going on, $150 million worth. As a matter of fact, they're going to take this track out, build another $10,000 track-only facility, and then they're going to reinstall a brand-new press box that's really going to benefit a lot of the media members that come here and watch these great Buckeye play on Saturdays. It should be a great facility. Visibility should be much better, and they're going to provide a lot of restrooms and bring this stadium up to code. That's the main thing, Mike. All right, Wallace completes it this time. Kreitzberg down to the 30. Brock Kreitzberg, leading receiver from a year ago, had three catches last week. Had seven touchdowns a year ago, ten for his career. Joe Cooper making the stop. Cooper out of Independence. Made that big hit on the special teams. And West Virginia caused the fumble a week ago. There's the numbers on Kreitzberg. So Wallace finally moving the chains now. Another first down, back-to-back -back first downs. Ball resting at the 30-yard line. Washon Tate. He gets the running room. Tate, 20. Almost broke it. Dragged down at the 17. Central McCullion. Coming up from the safety spot to finally make the stop. Good hard running there on the part of Tate. Take another look at it. And I'll tell you what, Toledo playing with some emotion right now. Good blocking up front. Reads his block well. Keeps those feet moving. Almost got into the end zone. Toledo playing with a little bit of confidence right now. Harris, the single setback. But Wallace wants to go upstairs. The lob to Kreisberg overshoots him at the corner of the end zone. And he might have been uh, three or four yards long that time. So Wallace finally getting some playing time, moving the chains. And uh, again, uh, Buckeye fans obviously delighted with that score, but you have to feel for number seven, Wallace, because this guy really, and not to beat a dead horse, but he really came into this game with some impressive numbers. I said earlier, in a game at Springfield South, he and D. Miller, they lost to Centerville 62-54. to Wallace at 572 yards, passing seven touchdowns, five went to D. Miller. Right now, Wallace would love to get into the end zone. Curry in motion. Dwayne Harris tries to spin. He's close to the 15, but stopped probably a yard shy. As Toledo gets a little confidence going, on the other side of the ball, the Ohio State defense, you've got a lot of second and third teamers out there, a bunch of young guys. And you look along the sideline, the Ohio State bench, and you see a lot of the starters. Standing along the sidelines, Andy Katzenmore leading the way, cheering on that second-team defense. They want a shutout this afternoon. Twin receivers at the bottom of your screen now. John Cooper looks on. Wallace with a third-down situation. Great concept, poor execution. Curry was cutting back over the middle. He had a lot of green in front of him, and Wallace simply threw it behind him. Absolutely wide open, and that's one Chris Wallace will normally make. I mean, you can't get any more open than that and just threw it behind him. But Chris Wallace will feel bad about that one when he looks back on it. So Todd France, the freshman out of Maumee, former All-Stater. Ball will be spotted at the 23. It'll be a 33-yard kick. And the freshman trying to avert the shutout. But it's wide. So France comes up empty with 
freshman out of Maumee, 0 for 1 here this afternoon. And the Buckeyes preserve the shutout. 5.54 to go in quarter number three. Let's check out some of the other scores in college football around the country. Those scores will be uh, coming up uh, forthcoming. Kansas State now really turning it on against Northern Illinois. That game only at the half. Penn State, they're in the fourth quarter, less than 15 minutes before Joe Paterno wins his 300th ball game. And of the ACC, this one tightening up now. 12th ranked Virginia over Maryland, 24 to 16. That game in the fourth. Garcia remains at quarterback. And Jonathan Wells still on his feet across the 30, up to about the 33 yard line. Wow, that was pretty good. We've got a flag on the field, but boy, that was pretty good on the part of Jonathan Wells. I thought he was going to go down on the initial hit, kept his balance, kept chugging along. Take another look at Jonathan Wells, just a freshman. Takes the stutter step at the line of scrimmage. And look at that, it looked like he was going to go down there, kept his balance, that's very good. How happy is he? Yeah. Yeah, but unfortunately it looks like it's going to be nullified, a personal foul called against Ohio State. True freshman LaCharles Bentley with a uh, slap to the head, an illegal slap to the head. Can't do that. It's not allowed. They wear those big helmets. Then. Yeah. Well, don't be slapping like, me up here. So like when the defensive guys just to coming around that end, slapping, trying to get at that quarterback. Oh, Wells tried to do it again up across the 25-yard line, dropped at about the 26. So Jonathan Wells out of River Ridge, Louisiana, getting some playing time here as a freshman. Mark Garcia. The Ohio Bobcats down. In Madison, 38 zip. Boy, the Bobcats had a tough one at North Carolina State, huh? Up 31-14. They lose at 34-31. How about that score? Boy, Iowa. This one's in Iowa City, too. Interesting to see who Hayden Fry played that quarterback. It's Wells trying to break to the outside up near the 30-yard line. He might have got to the 30. Looks like he got the first down, however. Under five minutes to go in quarter number three, and uh, Purdue... Can you get in the win column against the Rice Owls? That one nearing the fourth quarter now. And Northwestern down by 17 to Duke. Also nearing the fourth quarter. So another first down as the Buckeyes move the chains. First and 10, the ball at the 30-yard line. I formation behind Garcia. This time it's Derek Holmes out of Grove City who rushed for over 2,000 yards his senior year. Player of the year in the state of Ohio. We're at the Horseshoe in Columbus, Ohio. Story tradition here in Columbus. Within this edifice, Mike Gleason, Dom Tiberi, Ryan Miller. In the broadcast, compliments of ESPN Regional Television. Buckeyes lead at 49 to nothing, but you look around this stadium, Mike, not many Buckeye fans have left. This is the uh, home opener. like to pile up the W's in the home opener. Last time they lost, 1978. This time Garcia feeling heat once again. This time it's uh, Keith Travers. Coming up from his outside, a linebacker spot. Now the third down situation. Let's go back downstairs with Brian Miller. Well, Mike, I'm standing next to uh, Brett Bartholomew, the punter for Ohio State. And but that right before the half of that field goal attempt, it looked like he was trying to recover fumble, and he got a little fist in the face and broke his nose. So uh, we'll have to keep tabs on Brent and see how he's doing here later in this half. The trials and tribulation of college football, huh? Mm. 20 years from now, cold day, feel that bend of the nose. Garcia, nice play action. Rolling left and overshoots Jimmy Redman at the 38-yard line. Boy, Mark Garcia would like to have that one back. It's third and five, rolled out, had a lot of time, and just simply overshot the receiver. You know, as far as Bartholomew with that broken nose, I think that you talk about 20 years or, or down the road, I think he'll appreciate that broken nose because <laughs> a lot of times, let's face it, kickers don't ever get any kind of contact. <laughs> Although I wonder if he may wore, uh, be wearing a, a different kind of face mask next week. 
Number one uh, punter in the Big Ten a year ago, back on the field, though, at his 20 yard line. Harris back at the 20 of the Rockets. 3.49 to go in quarter number three. Nice high kick. His last kick went 56 yards. This one drives. Harris back and he fumbled the football. Is it Ohio State ball? Yes. Indication. Buckeyes will have it at the 13 yard line. Now they changed the call. The initial call was the Buckeyes had it, but now they reversed the call and the Rockets. Looked like number four. Well, he just let it bounce off his shoulder pad. There you see the ball's on the ground. Well, number four, Tawan Tate yeah. was there, but actually Kelly Herndon, number 11. Johnny on the spot, jumps on the football, and uh, boy, that saves a big break. Now, speaking of the broken nose, let's uh, step back in time and take a look at this play again. There he is. He, he was on that bad snap. There you see him with the ball. And oh! You see, the kickers like some action, but there's something about the nose. Yeah, hit that nose. Well, Sean Tate tries to break to the outside. And he's wrapped up by a host of tacklers, but not until he gets across the 15-yard line. Yeah, that does hurt. Cooper. That does hurt when he gets in the nose. It makes your eyes water up. <laughs> you know? Something about that nose. Yeah. He's been playing basketball in the winter. Yeah. Oh, watch Sean Tate. It's good to see him back running again, though. Two years ago. Hard to believe it's been two years yeah. since he went down in that game against the Indiana Hoosiers in the first quarter. He had 50 yards and 11 carries, and they really, really ripped up his knee pretty bad. Running pretty well here this afternoon, but his team trails 49 to nothing at the three-minute mark of quarter number three. So moving on the line, but they get back, and it doesn't matter because they have no place to go. As number 93, Randy Homa, is the first Buckeye on the spot. Remember Homa came here as a linebacker. People thought he'd be the next Chris Billman. Now he's playing on the defensive line, but they say he'll do anything to play. Practice is hard. You know, Mike, you talk about uh, that knee of Washon Tate. We talk about Joe Montgomery's. It's really amazing where we've come with medical science, the way that they are able. I mean, a few years ago, that would have been career ending. Oh, really? She would. Putting on the heat, and Wallace throws it out of bounds. Good contact over there. Out of bounds, however, as Mel Long goes down hard. We're going to get a flag on there. They're going to call rough in the passer. No, oh, Brent Johnson and Cheatwood were running him down. Yeah. He got rid of the ball, and then they nailed him, and he went out of bounds. He took a big hit as he rolled to his right, running for his life. Actually, they're going to call uh, called against... Uh, Robert the passer. It's coming back yeah. against Ohio State. Yeah. Penalty, previous spot. Push down. There you see Wallace running. Well, give him a little shove out of bounds. He didn't exactly level him, but Brent Johnson's uh, flagged for the play. A little extra curricular activity, so it's first and ten of the 29-yard line now. Freeman in motion. The Tate gets the call. Tries to spin inside the 30. It's up to about the 31. Cheatwood on the play. And uh, Joe Paterno, that is a final now. Joe Paterno puts number 300 neatly in the record books with a 48-3 win over Gary Blackney and the Falcons of Bowling Green this afternoon. What a career he has had. I read a stat where he's responsible for, what, over half of Penn State's wins in their history. Well, he's been there forever. Jesus. It's amazing how long his assistant coaches have been with him. Twin receivers, bottom of your screen now. Second and nine, 31. It's Freeman in motion. Trying to buy some time with the play action. Wallace, feeling the heat, throws it out of bounds again. Tony Eisenhardt that time. Eisenhardt uh, chose to let up. They've already been hit with one penalty. Here, take another look at this. Tate trying to get a block. Number 24. Was that Ryan Pickett? Simply ran over him like a truck. Third and nine at the 31. 
minute 27 to go in the third quarter. The Buckeyes leading 42 to nothing at halftime. And they tacked on one more. 49 to nothing. Terry Pinkle trying to get out of here healthy and start focusing on the Mid-American Conference race. Buckeyes want to come. They're showing blitz. They say Kreitzberg jumps on the offensive line. Prior to the snap, we have defense in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty. That goes against Ohio State, so Kreitzberg did jump, but not until Ohio State had jumped offside. Made some contact. Came on the left side. Tony Eisenhardt played little hoops. It's all state in basketball as well as football here in the state of Ohio. John Cooper ranked number two in the country after that Rose Bowl victory over Arizona State. But right now he's holding on to the number one spot in all of college football. The Buckeyes hit five times with penalties last week, seven times here this afternoon. Twins at the top and bottom of your screen. Wallace with some time this time, but he's run down, and he's finally dropped. Putting the finishing touch, Jason Otts. But James Cotton making the initial contact from his defensive end spot. He's so had Jason Ott finally has a chance to uh, hit somebody, but James Cotton does a nice job of uh, setting him up for the play. Let's listen. And you can tell, much to the delight of the home crowd, as soon as they hear those pads popping. So Lindstrom on the punt once again. Nate Clements, the true freshman out of Shaker Heights, back to receive for Ohio State. It's a low line drive kick, but it gets a Toledo bounce. And it's going to go inside the 20-yard line. It's finally downed at the 19-yard line, 81 yards away from Pater. So Lindstrom, he's had some good kicks, and he's had to rush some kicks. Good hands this time. Yeah, that was a bad snap on the pad, part of the long snapper. He came back, one hopped up, kept his eye on the ball, able to get it, kept his composure, and able to get off a good kick. And Mark Garcia comes back on the field once again to lead the Ohio State Buckeyes. This time he'll have Derek Holmes in the backfield. Again, Garcia with some pressure, but he gets the pass off. Good coverage that time by Toledo. Sean Penny, the intended receiver. And Corey Morris making the defensive play. So good coverage. The Rockets are playing some pretty good defensive football in the last possession for Ohio State. They're not going to be real happy when they look at these films. The coaches aren't with the pressure that Mark Garcia got in this ball game. That line needs to do a better job. This is the second string, most of these guys. And like I said, these guys are just one injury away. And actually, Combs doing a nice job after the fake handoff of picking up the blitz that time. But Garcia was rushed with the throw. Combs with the call. It's the right side, across the 20, up to about the 22-yard line. Corey Morris, along with Greg King, making the stop for the Rockets. Uh, King, a three-year starter, but uh, coming off the bench this season because he's been battling some injuries. So Derek Combs, the USA Today, Ohio Player of the Year, 2,000 yards, 24 touchdowns, while playing for Grove City a couple of years ago. Ryan Cross, one of the top uh, high school football programs uh, in Central Ohio. That's the end of quarter number three. It's still 49 Zep Buckeyes over the Rockets, and you're watching Big Ten football from ESPN+. Plus. We're back in Ohio Stadium as we head for the final 15 minutes of this college football game, and there's the tail of the tape, as they say. Buckeyes, good balance there in the first and second quarter. 21 points apiece, seven in the third quarter. 49 zip, third and seven out of the 22-yard line, working out of the shotgun formation. And Garcia feeling the pressure once again. The Rockets, Gallant all over him, and it's going to be incomplete. They actually completed the football to Kevin Griffin, but he was out of bounds. So Brent Bartholomew comes back on the field. 
And that was a good job on the part of Kevin Griffith, un unable to keep his feet in bounds, but he could see that Garcia was running, was under pressure, and a good receiver comes back to his quarterback. Griffin came back, but unfortunately unable to keep his feet in bounds. So Bartholomew kicking from about the 10 yard line. And Jameel Turner standing back at his 30. Anticipating another long kick by the Buckeye senior out of Florida. It's off of beauty this time. Nice spiraling kick. And Turner's going to take it at the 30, but he calls for the fair catch. So the Rockets will be 70 yards from pay dirt. The Buckeye defense uh, trying to hold on for the shutout. Okay, John Cooper. Coaches before him, a lot of All-Americans coming out of this school. And for more on that, let's go down to Ryan Miller. Yeah, I tell you what, Mike, there sure are a lot of All-Americans. And one of the best traditions at Ohio State is the Buckeye Grove, just located at the south end of the end zone outside the stadium. And right there, you're looking at former Buckeye Chris Spielman, who is the honorary captain today. Every All-American gets one of those trees planted in Buckeye Grove with a plaque in their honor. Not too bad of a tradition. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. I know Chris Spielman. Uh, a lot of Buckeye fans, he is their favorite All-American. Play action, still trying to buy some time to Wayne Harris at the 15, 25-yard line. And he is dropped by Joe Cooper again. Cooper and uh, David Mitchell, a couple of local products. Joe Cooper actually moving up on the depth chart because Cortland Bullard uh, having some problems with a groin, a lot like uh, Preston Harrison used to. A recurring groin injury. Ball. First of all, late hit. Defense, 15 yards. Well, once again, the Buckeyes flagged. This time for a late hit. Then I'm sure Monday at practice, uh, coaching staff will have a few words for him because at 49 to nothing, it's one thing down, but uh, if you're in a tight ball game, you definitely don't want these penalties, uh, foolish penalties, especially in the second half. So with the assistance of the OSU defense, the Rockets move the chains a little bit further downfield. Now the ball resting at the 44. But they're lucky to get over the 45-yard line. As that Buckeye defense uh, all over the place. Homa once again, along with Jeff Wilson. Jeff Wilson, a fifth-year senior out of Florida. A couple of years ago, it looked like he was definitely projected as a starter. He had some big games earlier. It just says something about the talent that uh, they keep bringing back here at Ohio State. They got a lot of talent. Go back to that personal foul. You don't like to see that, but you got guys in there. They're scrapping. They're trying to get noticed by the coaches. You don't want to get noticed that way, though. Wallace buys some time with the fake pitch. Completes it this time. Kreisberg is nailed. He is hit hard and driven out of bounds. But well, they do complete the pass. Nate Clements, the freshman, coming out really lowered the boom. Well, that was good concentration on the part of Kreitzberg because he had to hear him coming. Two of them. He makes the grab up in the air. Wow. Because he was looking back. He had to see him coming. He's able to hang on to the football, but I'll tell you what, that'll clean the cobwebs out. Wow. <laughs> His mouthpiece went flying about uh, seven or eight yards. Yeah. Popped right out of his mouth. Third down and five now. The ball resting at the midfield stripe. Rockets. 81 yards today. Another completion. It's Kreitzberg again. He's brought down at the 40. It's Nate Clements along with uh, Steve Belisari. He's getting a little bit of confidence. I'll tell you what, this Nate, this Kreitzberg is one tough football player. You look at him, you know he's tough. He's making his 36th consecutive start. Hit 44 catches last year. Seven touchdowns. Six yards now, total offense for the Rockets. At well over 300 yards a week ago against the Temple Owls. Lashawn Tate, running room, dragged down, number 10, Joe Cooper. But Tate up uh, close to the first down again for Toledo. And if you look down along the Buckeye sideline once again, Mike, here we see the second, third string defense giving up some yardage. Toledo moving the chains, and you see those guys standing there. They're saying, we want the shutout. There's the big cat. I wouldn't want to have to come over to the sideline and face him and explain to him why I didn't protect his shutout. 
Well, I wouldn't want to have been a high school football player in Central Ohio trying to face him, <laughs> trying to turn the corner. Rashawn Tate turns the corner this time, picks up the first down. And Tate's are running well. Number one in the Toledo record books and rushing yards, attempts, all purpose, rushing touchdowns, 100 yard games, and 200 yard games. Ran right over his helmet, but look at that stiff arm. Wow. And then he will lose his helmet there. Comes right off. He's a tough football player. He's senior out of Detroit. He's an astronaut with the numbers over the last uh, few years. 14 carries for 58 yards here this afternoon. Wallace feeling the pressure, and it's picked off. Percy King. He's immediately dropped at the 10-yard line, as is a penalty flag. Intended receiver was Brock Kreisberg, but number 17, Percy King, who really emerged in spring ball, gets the interception. Well, you can give some credit to number 30, Jason Ott. He came in and really made him hurry the pass. Watch number 30, Jason Ott, comes in untouched. Made Wallace hurry the pass, and Percy King is right there, able to haul it in. Goes up, goes up high. The prototypical body for a safety, 6'4", 210-pound junior. The illegal block below the waist on the returning team. Half the distance of the penalty, first down. So the Buckeyes have the first down, but push back half the distance to the goal. So they'll start 95 yards away. Gary Pinkle, 12 years assistant coach, University of Washington. So he's experienced three Rose Bowls, two victories, two out of three out in Pasadena. He's an intense guy. I'll tell you what, talking to him yesterday and the shape he's in, he's a young looking guy. I'll tell you what, he looks like he could still go out there and play. He is an intense, intense man. Well, he played with Jack Lambert at Kent. He was a Hall of Famer at the tight end. Ackerman fumble on the exchange. I believe it was Sean Penny playing the fullback and uh, Mockerman. Austin Mockerman had a decent spring, getting some playing time here today. 6'5", 215-pound redshirt freshman out of Mission Viejo, California. You got the third-string quarterback in there, Mockerman. And uh, you got to make sure you get that ball in his belly. Yeah, check that. I said it was Penny. It was actually Jamar Martin, the 6'1", the true freshman out of Canton McKinley. So second and ten now. Ball still resting at the five-yard line. Jonathan Wells gets the call. He's up against across the five to the six, maybe. Gain of a yard. Bring up a third and long for the Buckeyes deep in their own territory. So now some of the youngsters uh, getting a chance to play. If you look at this year's senior class, Dom, a chance to become the third straight senior class to break a tie, the four-year OSU record for victories. And they probably will do it. This class is 32-6. and six. Now the seniors of 96 had 41 victories. So they tie that with a nine-win season, but 10-win uh, seasons have been the norm the last three years at Ohio State. Third and eight at the seven. Play action. Mockerman wants to go for the home run ball. And it's almost picked off at the 45-yard line. Kevin Griffin wanted that one, but uh, probably laid up a little bit too long. It looked like uh, Griffin had a beat at about the 40. Then he had to wait for the ball. Take another look at it from behind. Play fake. Let's it sail. I think he got a little too much wind under it because Griffin did have a step on him. And he goes, yep. I needed to lead him just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. You don't get as many reps, though, when you're the third-string quarterback. And now Bartholomew deep in his end zone. The return on. No rush. Turner peeled back, and he had a little bit of running room, and he has stood up. He is nailed. Like Rodney Bailey on the uh, punt coverage team to make the initial stop. 10.15 to go before they put this book. One in the books. 49-0 Buckeyes over the Rockets. The numbers on the game is the Ohio State Buckeyes look to improve to 2-0 in 1998 with the Tigers of Missouri sitting on the horizon. They'll be in the horseshoe next Saturday afternoon.
49 zip Buckeyes over the Rockets of Toledo. Twin receivers bottom of your screen. They'll keep it on the ground. And that's Chester Taylor, third string and tailback. He's getting some playing time now. As Harry Pinkle trying to keep some of his starters healthy as they get into the back schedule and getting some of the younger players some playing time. Well, the Bobcats hung with North Carolina State's, but Barry Alvarez and the Badgers in Madison today, all over Ohio U, 45 zip. And Bowling Green taking on Penn State's, Ohio U against Wisconsin. Here are the Toledo Rockets. Joe Cooper trying to get in, puts some pressure on. It's complete to Curry across the midfield stripe. Down into Buckeye territory. Nate Clements and Jason Otts, along with Tim Cheekwood. Mike, that a pretty good look at uh, Wallace's arm. He has a dandy arm, and he threw a rope out there. Quick drop back and fires that football. That's in slow motion. Look at the way that thing got out there. Got out there in a hurry. <laughs> now, like we said, 3,000 yards, 27 touchdowns is long against the... Miami of Ohio went for 86 yards a year ago. Right now it's third and a yard to go. Over the midfield stripe, 48 yard line. The fullback, Green. And he keeps turning and keeping those legs moving down inside the 45. Joe Cooper again making the stop. Cooper, heard his name quite frequently here. Cooper out of Independence High School. You know, Mike, I take a look down at the Ohio State sideline. All the starting defensive guys sitting on the bench right now, but I guarantee you, as Toledo will get, to, as they now get into Ohio State territory and as they get closer to the goal line, you'll see those guys get up. The backup's getting some uh, important playing time, some experience. The pass is complete, and uh, Billick had some running room. So the big tight end pulls in his second pass of the afternoon. Wallace. Trying to prevent that shutout. Eight minutes and 29 seconds to go before they put this one in the history books. And they trail 49 to nothing, but the Rockets would love to at least get on the scoreboard. And over on the Buckeye sidelines, they're saying, come on, guys, let's uh, preserve the shutout. Put the big goose egg on. Well, they're sitting down right now, the defensive starters, that is. But let them get a little closer, and you'll see the big cat. Well, the big cat just got up right now. Chester Taylor, he's wrapped up. Marcus Perez making the initial contact for Ohio State this time. Defensive guys want to throw shutouts. And right now, I guarantee you, in that Toledo huddle, they're talking about, let's put seven on the board. Come on, let's suck it up. Let's put one in the end zone. Let's put seven points on the board against the number one ranked team in the country. And there's the big cat. He may not be out on the field, but uh, I guarantee you those guys out on the field feel his presence. Second and 10. That's Ray Curry. Across the 25, down to about the 23-yard line. So Jason out on the play defensively for the Buckeyes. Cheerleaders chilling right now. Enjoying the broadcast on ESPN+. Plus. John Cooper enjoying the afternoon of sunshine here. In the horseshoe as they get ready for the Missouri Tigers. There's the big cat, number 45. Buckeyes, the fans, the players, Coach Cooper, the cheerleaders, everybody. They've had a lot to cheer about today. And the last reception to Ray Curry. He hasn't seen the football much here, but this guy runs a 4-3. They're hoping that he was the guy that they could get the pigskin to this afternoon. But Wallace has been pressured. Goes over the middle. The big tight end, Billick, and it's picked off by Cheatwood. Nine interceptions a year ago. He has four interceptions here this afternoon. This time, Tim Cheekwood. Seven minutes and four seconds. 49-0 Buckeyes. You're watching Big Ten football on ESPN+. Plus. Ohio Stadium, that's the scene. As the Buckeyes open up a 49-0 lead. Mike Gleason, Dom Tiberi, Ryan Miller. Certainly happy to be inside your living rooms here today as the Buckeyes try to go to 2-0. Steve Belisari, his first days at quarterback. Southpaw comes out throwing, and he throws a bullet. It's complete, his first pass to Derek Warnke. Let's go downstairs to Ryan Miller. Mike, Tim Cheatwood with that great interception is going to 
get a couple of Buckeye leaves on the back of his helmet. In case you were wondering, this is another one of the great traditions at Ohio State. This is Joe Germain's helmet. He's got 14, or actually 13 Buckeye leaves. And to be honest with you, Mike and Dom, I don't remember him giving them out too liberally when I played here. <laughs> Oh, geez, singing the blues down there. Let's let's pull out the uh, the fiddles, huh? <laughs> Ryan had a bunch of them. Look at Steve Belisari. You're going to see a lot of Buckeye leaves someday on his helmet, I'm sure. But right now, the youngster out of Florida. He's got one. He got it for a, a big play in last week's game against West Virginia. You got to do something special to get a Buckeye leaf. And right now, he's saying, all right, guys. Let's get a Buckeye leaf. What do I got to do to get one? Let me throw a touchdown. Let me run a touchdown. Let me come up with a big play. I want a Buckeye leaf. Well, Buckeye fans will want to remember his first attempt was a complete pass. Combs trying to break to the outside, and he had some room. But luckily, Kevin Rollins was there to haul him down. But getting back to Belisari, he really put some zip on that uh, pass to Derek Warnke. Well, he is certainly an athlete. This guy can play defense. He can play offense. He's an athlete. There's no question about it. Number eight. The little brother of Greg Belisari. He was an outstanding linebacker here at Ohio State. Former captain. Fourth and one now. The ball at the 27. Buckeyes go for it. They got it. Jonathan Wells with the fourth down conversion. Number 28, Jonathan Wells, just a freshman. Suburb of New Orleans. Take another look at it. Needed a yard, got more than a yard. Step to his left, big hole there. Running hard, keeps those feet chomping. Feet, I mean feet. Belisari, two for two, up near the midfield strike. Is that piled on some yardage? Derek Warnke again on the receiving end of the Belisari pass. Play action, rolls out to his right. Left-hander, southpaw. Well, that's why he's so good, he's a left-hander. He puts it right on a dime. Who else was a left-handed quarterback? Well, I mean, you've got uh, Kenny Stabler. Mike Gleason. No, I mean, uh, <laughs> you're a left-handed quarterback. Uh, I was going to say Bobby Douglas, but I don't know about Bobby Douglas as far as throwing the football. Well, oh, there's Bobby Douglas right here. Look at this. Belisari says, hey, I'm a freshman. I'm going to play some big-time college football. Penalty flag. This one could be coming back. Well, a lot of schools wanted this young man, but he said, hey, I want to play quarterback. People said, ah, you're going to be a safety in college. Well, Miles State said, yeah, you can play quarterback. He's uh, getting the job done now, but the uh, yellow laundry on the field could call this one back. It's going to be holding Ohio State. Holding offense. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. Wow, that's too bad. That was, uh, that was a great play on the part of Belisari. Take another look at it. Rolling out to his left. Feels the pressure. Says, all right, I can run. You saw the penalty there. Just basically tackled him, took him down. But Belisari saw the daylight, ran to the open field. That's too bad. That was a, that was a good gutsy play on the part of the true freshman. Tam Hopkins, the guilty party that time, bringing the play back. Guilty of the infraction. Belisari again, and it's complete again. Wisniewski on the receiving end. So he's three for three and throwing the football here this afternoon. He said, hey, I can play quarterback, and he definitely looks like he can uh, get the job done. Of course, the Buckeyes with another top-notch quarterback recruit coming in from Michigan next year. With Garcia, Jermaine, both gone. It's going to be interesting to see who Ohio State's quarterback is next year because you've got two seniors leaving. Straight drop back this time. Belisari rolls out, incomplete. Had his man, but off the fingertips. Chad Cascio out of Upper Arlington. Chad Cascio. Boy, Chuck Stobart says this guy's a smart football player. Cascio, great baseball player in high school as well, but decided on football. Another flag on the field. 
John Cooper trying to get some playing time for these young guys, and when they're screwing up, he lets them know about it. And he was letting Greg Bellisari know about it. Cooptown, someone out there to use their head. Well, John Cooper, the first and only coach to win the Rose Bowl in the Big Ten and the Pac-10. Of course, beating Michigan when he was with Arizona State and beating Arizona State when he was with Ohio State. That game voted the number one college game in all of the land that year. So the Buckeyes now second and 22, ball resting on the 38-yard line. Three minutes and 44 seconds before they neatly put this one away. Belisari off the fingertips again of Cascio. He's going to want that one back because in practice they say this guy doesn't drop too many footballs. Runs good, good routes. His mother Debbie, the secretary for Jim O'Brien in the OSU basketball office. Does a great job. That ball had a little zip on it. Belisari has a nice arm. He throws hard. Fire that baby right down there. Belisari looking downfield has his man. It's complete. It's Warnke again. No, they're, they're saying he was out of bounds. Well, it looked like Warnke was uh, walking the tightrope. Definitely looked like a, a good pass right below the press box here, but they're going to call it back. Well, that's too bad. I'll tell you what, he rolls out. You get the feeling Belisari likes to roll out. Ooh, I don't know. That looked pretty only good to need, me. Only need one foot in bounds, of course, in college football, but Brent Bartholomew is on the field now. And it uh, looks like they took a few yards off of uh, Belisari's stats here this afternoon. Looked to me like his, at least one foot was in bound. But it doesn't matter what we think. <laughs> is that we don't? Is that so? Huh? We don't have the uh, stripes on. No, it's easy to call the game up here. Yes. Another good kick by Bartholomew. This one, sending Turner. Now Turner won't even go back. It hits at the five-yard line, and it's down at the eight-yard line. Three minutes and 24 seconds to go. It's 49 to nothing. It's all Ohio State. That's Fred Puggett and John Tenuta right there, defensive coaches. Puggett's, of course, the defensive coordinator. His 1996 team led to the Big Ten in four major defensive categories. Right now, some of his backups getting some playing time. Taylor with the call across the 10 to about the 13-yard line. But you look at that 96 defense, Tom, second in scoring defense nationally. They lost eight regulars from that 96 unit. And last year, they finished second in scoring defense again. Danny Cole playing quarterback right now. So Chris Wallace, we've seen the last of him. Another frustrating afternoon for Chris Wallace. On both sides of the football, this is where guys get noticed. You're going to see guys playing very hard right now. All of them trying to get the coaches to notice them. That's the way you move up in the depth chart. Taylor again. Chester Taylor running hard up near the 20-yard uh, line. Trying to impress his coaches as well. And to get inside the huddle of your favorite Big Ten team, go online at www.bigten.org for all the football and conference news from around the Big Ten. 2.30, 6 and counting, 49 to nothing. The Rockets, 80 yards away from getting on the scoreboard, preventing the shutout. Dan Cole, 6'3", 205-pound sophomore out of Monroe, Michigan. This first pass, it's complete. The big tight end, Nabilic. Well, the Buckeyes taking on Bowling Green twice, now Toledo. They have Ohio University and Cincinnati both coming into 1999. The Buckeyes 12-1. Uh, They'll be 13-1 against the Max schools. Actually, the only loss came to Akron way back in 1894. I wonder if they have any uh, film of that game. We should talk to Eric Swearingen, our and, producer. And, and despite what you think, I did not cover that game in 1894. <laughs> I thought you were <laughs> behind the camera getting no, the film. No. Taylor again, this time with some running room up across the 40. And he's finally dropped Joe Cooper once again out of Independence. 
former defensive player of the year in Division II. Kansas State now with 73 points wow. on the board against Northern Illinois. A lot of people feel that team with Michael Bishop at quarterback is for real. Joe Pa gets win number 300. And Virginia opening up some breathing room in the ACC over the Terrapins. Wisconsin, that's the final 45 zip over the Bobcats. 45 nothing right here. It's 49 nothing. John Cooper's Buckeyes on top of the Rockets. Under two minutes to go now. Quick handoff. Goes to number 28. That's Lyle Green. Two carries for 12 yards. Last week, that's his second carry of the afternoon. Thank Dave Graham and Randy Reinhardt for helping us out in the booth. Another score. Look at this in Iowa City. Iowa struggled against Central Michigan in the first half. Obviously struggling. Interesting to note if Randy Reiners or Kyle McGann played quarterback for the Hawkeyes. Purdue in a tight one with the Owls now. 21-19. Duke all over Northwestern. That was close. 17-10 the last time we checked. So the Blue Devils pouring it on. And they're keeping it on the ground. Number 19, Taylor again. And Taylor to Buckeye territory near the 45-yard line. Running hard. It took about four or five red shirts to haul him down. Keeping it in bounds, keeping the clock running. Both teams ready to call it a day. Toledo picked to win the Mac. Minute three to go. The Buckeyes looking to go 2-0. Oh. It's 49-0. We're back with more after this. Well, John Cooper is a minute away from his 77th win in the 90s. Coach Pinkle go back to the drawing board and start focusing on that MAC championship. 51 seconds to go. Cole at the quarterback. Taylor again. Fourth straight time he's touched the football. Tries to break it to the outside. Good defensive play that time by Ohio State. Nate Clements, true freshman out of Shaker Heights, six feet, 185 pound freshman. Boy, a lot of young players last last week, this week. Get a, a good look. Playing time. Yeah, get a good look at these guys because uh, this is the future for both football teams. These uh, are the guys that will be playing for Toledo in the years to come. Much the same for Ohio State. Last play of the game now for the Toledo Rockets, and they keep it on the ground. It's Taylor again. He's stopped by Joe Cooper out of Independence. And that's going to wrap it up, and they're going to put this one in the books. The Buckeyes up 42 zip at half, and they win it 49-0 over the Rockets of Toledo. Back with our final thoughts coming up after this.